Hello everybody and welcome back to Hardly Heroes. Our party, <clears throat> victorious and flush with cash from their their robbery, is uh what? What are we doing? Well, I think we've uh if we're picking up like we've just rushed back from you know, we've burst out of the house, mm -hmm. ran down a few alleys, pulled our ski masks <laughs> off and made back to our to our house, probably mm -hmm. like on the dining table if there is one. Mm -hmm. It might not be, we might just be on the floor, but and then dumping all of the coins that we got yeah. out and oh throwing the the silks, like the dresses and the scarves that we've got on the floor and kind of take stock of what we've got here. So I start what? counting Can out coins. Can you believe it? That was exhilarating. <laughs> it, was, it was easier than I expected. Thank God that guy didn't get any ideas. Uh, we, but this is a good haul. Kill him. No, it was, <laughs> that was not even close. That guy was, uh, he was, he was scared for his life. He's oh soft. God. Why didn't we do this before? Look at look at the money. Yeah, it's good money, but uh, you know, our luck can't last forever. Keep doing stuff like this. Eventually, you're gonna run into someone who's gonna make things difficult. We we can go to Raj's the rest of the week. We gotta we gotta lay low. We can't be going back to Raj's right now. Mm. Maybe there's another kebab shop around here we can get something from, but we gotta stick away from the east side of the city. It's dangerous. Copperheads, the redcoats, they're all looking for us now, probably. I mean, I'm sure that word will have got out to the redcoats that uh, Mickey's been axed and his keys have been stolen. Yeah. we got to be careful. Is there, like, a secret place where we can hide all this stuff, Neil, in this house? You know how we no. have, like, the under the stairs? Okay. Uh, I mean, there, there are places Could that be, are like, less conspicuous. Yeah, let's look for some floorboards that we might be able to pull up. Yeah, the place that you're in is not great, right? It's not well furnished, if it has any furnishings at all. Um, there are parts of the house that are kind of like crappy. The maintenance is low, and so like you could pull up a floorboard, and that would work well enough to like keep it out of sight, but the floorboards here are in such shape that like if someone were searching their house, they would find the floorboards that are weakened pretty easily. Um, I'm just trying to set a yeah. level of expectation yeah. that like this is yeah. an out of sight hiding spot, but this is a someone's gonna find this if they're searching your house and or looting your house, I should say. Got it. Cool. We yep. can we can improve it slightly. Like we could get a chair or something and put that over the floorboard where it is, or a rug or something like that. It's still still probably yeah, get found by a by yeah. a by a determined searcher, but yes. We can make it a little bit easier, though. Yes. Um, there. If the day comes that the party wishes to properly store their supplies and, and ill-gotten gains, then that's when we would venture down into the basements um, or maybe even into the dungeons where you could find, recapture, or build your own basement or dungeon that could be defended or at least have hidden entrances and be well out of the way of any suspicious or prying eyes. Yeah. Well, uh, I think for now this will do. So we'll pry open a floorboard with my dagger, mm -hmm. stash most of the coins down there. Um, I, okay, I guess I'll move some money to our hoard, Neil. Yeah? Yeah. Wealth and hoard. Yep. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep 50 silver on me. So I'll put 56 silver in there. Give me, give me some. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll put 21 gold in the hoard. I'll keep 15 for myself, and I'll give you 15 gold. Nice. Do you have any silver? I have 15. Okay, I give you another 15 silver from the horde. Okay. Uh, okay. Since you are carrying around money, if you are carrying around more than 50 coins, uh, you're going to have two coin pouches on your side. Um, if you have 50 coins or less, you can have one coin pouch on your side. I say this only because, you know, people walking around with multiple coin pouches look wealthier and appearances are a thing. And I want you to, you can take whatever Nick, appearance you want. I just want you to understand the, the consequences of these put decisions. Put six copper, Nick, into mm -hmm. the hoard. Okay, I'll put my copper in there as well. Thing is, though, like, if you've got a coin purse filled with exactly 50 and you try and buy something with That's change, true, you're going yeah. to run over. So... yeah. I think it's, I'm imagining like I've been the pub, right? I've got my wallet with my money in, but I've probably also got like a few pound coins and some silver in my pocket as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I've got my one coin purse with 15 gold and 35 silver. And then in my pockets, I've got like a handful of silver and copper. 
All right, so you just got like a pocket full of change that goes cha-ching, cha-ching as you walk. Nice. I mean, that lots of people do. You know, the, the, the I'm not point pass to... is cha-chinging anyway. You know, right, so. right. Totally fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to screw you. I'm just trying to... I, I want everyone to be on the same page as we advance. Yeah. That's fine. Um, okay. So, Pigeon. I think the best thing we can do now is keep our heads down. Those people might go to the guards. They might report this. Let's, uh, nobody knows we're here. You know, let's just hang out for a day or two. I'll go out and get us some food tomorrow. We can hang out. And then I think in a few days time, when the, uh, the market's on. Like, is that a thing, Neil? Would there be like a weekly market or a, yes. a market that's there twice a week? Yeah, weekly so market. We will wait for the weekly market. And that's where I'm going to go and try and trade the silk for some nicer clothes. Yeah. I, I want new clothes too. Yeah. I want a cool yeah, yeah, jacket well, like you had. Yeah, definitely. I need to get a new one of them. Well, we've got like three dresses here and a few scarves. We should be able to get a couple of outfits, a jacket or two. Hopefully. Yeah, I want people to think I'm someone important. Yeah. I look at Pigeon. What's your... Like, I'm imagining you've got like a mullet or something. No, Pigeon's bald. He's, is he uh, bald or has he just got a shaved head? He's got a shaved head. What about That's his like beard? Word. No, too young. Maybe like just some like scrappy like hairs growing in. Yeah, uh, so but not, I think like, a real mustache or anything. We could also probably get like a haircut and a shave. Yeah, like let's yeah. get you a shave. I'll get my like beard trimmed to like my oh, stubble back, my hair cut a little bit. We'll get some nicer clothes, and we can be walking around kind of like totally different than who we were before. I like it. Not totally different. I'm gonna, but, I'm yeah. gonna get a hat. I'm gonna cover my head. Good idea. Yeah, let's get a hat. Let's not go crazy. Let's see if we can just trade the silks and not spend any of this gold. Because we find an engineer or an accountant or something like we were talking about, they're gonna want some good coin. Are there fedoras or trilbies, Neil? No, that style of hat is yet, not in. Uh, no, the market is tomorrow. Actually, Friday is market day. Um, fedoras and trilbies and top hats are not in vogue right now. You've what, just got the. In vogue? Um, <clears throat> so Swearing what you have the actually there, there's one ultra common hat that you would then style and it's sort of just it's got the rounded bit in the middle and then it's got a big brim that comes off um, you've probably seen it on like preachers and priests and all sorts of stuff but people will then do things to that hat like they'll pin up one side of it or they'll pin up two or they'll pin up all three if you want to make like a tricorn hat and so there's a um, generalized sort of soft felted um, and properly processed black hat or you know gray or white or whatever other color and then you would like pin things to it or adjust how it looks like this um, kind of thing oh. what was this kind of uh, hot detail when john had the feather in his hat no not like that, not like that. sorry i'm trying to find it um we're looking at Uh, What's your pickpocketing score on, mate? Nothing. Okay. Five. Oh, come on, Chrome. You can do it, buddy. I'm a locksmith. Oh, we leveled up, didn't we? Do you think we can go back to the basement now and try the lock, right? We didn't technically level up. Oh, uh, didn't we? We're waiting on the XP. Okay. Um, See this woman's like sort of, oh, yeah, okay, okay. sort of yeah. like this. This is maybe like a, a softer, more gentle version, but imagine it being stiffer so it would come out straight. Usually you okay. could then soften it and it's not quite as thick and rounded, um, but this is the general style of hat. Sweet. It's a nice hat. It's a nice hat. It's a good hat, yeah. So I can't get a flat cap then. Um, I have to Google Do you know a flat cap. Do you know what a flat cap is? It's what a farmer would wear in England. Oh, I know. This is like what the paper boys would have, yeah? That's what we think of. Oh, these are very trendy in the modern age, but maybe not so much once upon a time. I feel like Idris Elba in a flat cap would look good. Um, I'm sure he's worn. This is generally not what we... No. People here want the wider brimmed to protect them from the sun a little bit more. 
This is a, a more... The the latitude of this is like Mediterranean, and so you wouldn't want like a, a more northern hat that gives you the, the extra sunshine. Mm. You're trying to keep the sun off you most of the time. Got it. Got yeah. it, yeah. Okay. All, All right, so we'll, like, if yeah. the market's tomorrow, I guess we'll market's go tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, and it's tonight, so like, woo! You just <clears throat> lay down on your crappy mattress yeah. filled with damp straw, dreaming of of markets and silks and new clothes kebabs. and kebabs. Oh, God, it's yeah. going to be good. Well, morning dawns, <clears throat> and you can head to one of the two markets that happen in town. Now, there's one in Redcoat territory, and there's one in Demon Slayer territory. All right. Which market do you want to go to? Uh, Demon we'll go Slayer. To Demon Slayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Right so coats. to do that, you're going to have to walk through Pittman territory and oh. then through the, you can either go through the ruins along the road or you can go just through the abandoned area, which is sort of, you know, there are smaller roads. Um, and then oh, you the get to Demon Slayer. Area. Area. Would the safest way not to be, be to follow the inner wall? Um, yeah, you could definitely follow the inner wall. 100%. Yeah, so that'd be like guarded we'll and stuff, that. right? The inner wall might be guarded from the inside, but yeah. like... Would they, like, as an... Like, I would know this, right? Like, if you get into a fight at the base of the wall mm -hmm. and it's violent, like, mm -hmm. would the guards intervene or just let Absolutely you kill not. each other? They would just okay, let you kill so, each other, yeah. So offers there's no a, protection then. There's a, uh, a moat that goes around the inner wall as well. Uh, so you would... Yeah, there's yeah, 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 yeah. You know, road, moat, wall. And uh, the guards don't give a fuck. They're, they're, they're there to defend the inside. Yeah, so we'll take the civilized path as much as possible. I don't think we'll walk through the through the, through the the ruins. Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> generally through this little yeah. nook right here, which is fine. Yeah. Um, you want to roll? I just need to process mentally for a moment. Um, also, like, wait, can I ask some etiquette about, like, selling stolen goods at the market? Is totally. someone likely to try and challenge me on that? Or is it likely to be, even if somebody suspected it would be stolen, then they wouldn't really care? People are going to be able to tell that your goods are stolen almost immediately. You are not a merchant. You do not look like a person who would ever have a silk jacket. And... This is either ill-gotten gains or this is like maybe, maybe in the best case scenario, like a family's ancestral thing that's been yeah. passed down as the last piece of wealth you're holding on to. Um, My mom died. True. One of those things, right? But someone like you selling something like this, dead giveaway that there's some sort of crime involved with it, which is why you can sell it for so cheap or why your prices on selling it are so much lower. Um and Why? you're going to have to find a... Why? Well, because, because they know. There's no, there's no authority to refer it to. Right, but they Is also that... know that you can't sell this. You're just looking to make some money. And they know that you don't necessarily know the prices for everything. And they can probably get you to pay less for it. You know? That bit makes sense. But I think in the, in the modern day, the assumption is, well, if you want me to be part of a crime, I'm taking a risk and therefore I'm going to pay less. But right. I feel like there is no risk to these merchants in buying these things. Yeah, this is not so much a, I'm taking a risk by buying this from you. This is much more of a, you don't know what you're doing and I can charge you, I can underpay you for this because you don't have many options and we're all going to underpay you for this, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know, you go to a pawn shop and maybe you have a thousand dollar watch, but you can only sell it for like $250 at a pawn but shop. Like in a pawn shop though, you could do a trade for better value. I'm right. not really sure Good. exactly what that means. Like, 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 say if you have a ring and you could sell it to them for fifty dollars, mm -hmm. or you might be able to trade it for like seventy dollars of credit in the store. Mm. Okay, possibly. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hoping with the with the trading it because I'm hoping that we can get a slightly better deal doing it. Might that be way. able to trade it for some like out of date clothing that's like been sitting for a while, and you know we don't care, but the ladies would. Right. Because I might not know how much a silk dress is in gold, but I can point at an outfit for a man and say, that's worth less than a silk dress. Right, right. And mm -hmm. therefore, that should be a good trade for you. Mm -hmm. Let's um, do that. Okay. So generally speaking, if you are selling something used, you generally expect to sell it for half price of what you bought. Um, if you are selling something that you clearly don't have the authority to sell, that is clearly stolen or whatever, you can expect to generally pay quarter or sell it for quarter price. Um, just as some nice round numbers. 
So like a soldier selling a used sword sells it for half price, but like a street urchin selling the exact same used sword sells it for quarter price. Sure. Um, all right. Through the city we go, through the um, abandoned area, not the ruined area. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mooton, since you were so interested in rolling dice a moment ago, why don't you roll us a D100? Huge. All right. Yeah, you get on through. Do you see some other folks who give you like the what's up nod from a little bit of a ways, but don't make a move of it? Oh, but let's as... talk about our, our weapon situation here because that is important. Yes. I've lost really my important. coat. Mm -hmm. if you recall mm -hmm. so therefore i can't really carry around the dagger without whilst being con inconspicuous that's correct or conspicuous correct so i think i'm going unarmed to this event okay i got all my things okay uh and you've got a jacket that hides your weapons is that what i, I remember uh i think before what we said is like i have like a shirt and it's kind of a loose shirt so i have like the bandolier mm -hmm. under the shirt mm -hmm. but i'm gonna get a jacket here because i think it's cool okay because he's copying his uncle right yeah could so you turn up your, your mic a little bit Mooton? uh yeah is it better now oh yeah that's really good. Okay, no, no, that's perfect beautiful okay well we get to the market down on the south side of town we walk through the the civilized area head into demon slayer gang tori and immediately you can tell you're here because there's a bunch of big burly guys with tattoos of horns on their neck uh, like right around here, right around here-ish, is a, a pair of horn tattoos on their necks. Like a sort of like you know horns like this. Yeah, like like um, a minotaur's horns. Like, like a demon horns. horns. Like a demon's yeah. horns. Yeah, yeah. On their necks. Were you almost one of these, Luther? I thought about it. I didn't pass the. Uh, at the time, they were still they were still a town guard. I couldn't pass all the tests. I was young back then. You know, I kept running away from the barracks to meet girls. Didn't work out. Yeah, mom always said that you weren't the best. <laughs> yeah, your mom doesn't really, you know, she didn't know everything. Yeah. She said you couldn't hold down a job. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's true. But, you know, uh, life's tough out there on the on the streets, you know. Yeah. If I, you know, well, hey. Hey, it's not I don't that tough don't anymore. I don't want to bring up all the arguments between you, me and your mother. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some people are fortunate to have more, uh, let's say, luxurious jobs, job opportunities open to them. And some of us aren't. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's look around. That's not the trick with the market is, son. When you're walking around here, you don't just want to go to the first place you see. You need to you need to walk around a couple of times first, see what people are selling, get the lay of the land, see who's trying to screw people over, you know, find out what's going on, find the good deals. So let's just let's just walk around a bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna... Are there any cool things that catch my eye, Neil, that I can buy? Looking for hats. Oh, pigeon. There's so many cool things in the market. There's hats. There's hats that already have things attached. There's hats that are, like, already styled. And the ones that come pre-styled are pressed in that way. So, like, even if the pin comes off, it's going to be fine. Like, they're a little bit more sturdy for that regard. Um, there's clothing that's interesting. There's jewelry that's fun. There are toys. Like, someone has a, a really cool, you know, um, a nice set of, like, wagon uh toys like the the modern equivalent of like trucks but it would be like little wagons with little carts and little carved animals that you would put in them and little leashes that would attach the carts to the the, the animals um there are marbles that people are playing with like little glass beads to you and i a marble is nothing but like perfectly round glass beads that you can like roll and knock into each other there's games you could play with that for days i will buy a bag of marbles how much is that I see him, and I say, I think you're a little bit old for toys. What? Luther, please. It's it's only two silver for a bag of marbles. It's well, for the marbles. Silver. What's coming out of your pocket? I'll give the guy uh, four silver. I'll buy two bags. Oh, excellent. Um, each bag would have had 10, so you get 20 marbles. Uh, they don't come with a bag. The bags are extra. So um, you can Although just put them in your pocket. Although now I'm about it. This is a great yeah, tool if no, we're getting it chased. Is, it is, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I bought it. Uh, I, I think Luther, as he takes it, has a thought, and then he hands four silver to the guy as well. I'm going to buy two packs of marbles. That's a good idea. Oh, you want to play with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can play together. How much are the bags, mister? Uh, an extra silver for the bag. Mm, 
Okay. Yeah. Now, th these marbles, they're sold in groups of 10. Um, you could probably fit, like, 50 marbles in one bag, uh, but they're sold okay. in smaller components. Oh, smaller okay. Chunks. Yeah. Shall I list them on my card sheet as 20 marbles, or shall I yes. just put one bag of marbles? Put bag of 20 marbles, please. Uh, how much is it weigh? Um, that's a great... I give the guy an extra silver. I buy 10 more marbles. Rather We've got marble. Bags. We've got marble crazy. We got marbles. We're good. <laughs> it, it can't be like a pound, right? Uh, ah. Half a pound for marbles? Oh, fuck. Uh, this can't Just be call right. It. Just call How, it one pound and be done with it. Bag of marbles, 113 grams. Looks like there's 20 in this. That can't be right. They're a tenth of an ounce for the weight of a... No, this other says... I'm seeing like four ounces for like 20. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's like 20 ounces. Okay. So what are we calling it? In game. One pound, half That's a pound. pound. We're just going to call it a pound of marbles. Pound. 20 marbles is one pound. That is the rule. Okay. Yep. I have 1.5 pounds then. Excellent. Okay. Good. We keep walking around. What did I tell you about buying the first thing you saw? I say as I covet my marbles. <laughs> uh, you, why'd you buy them too? Well, yeah, because you, you, they, you know, he drew me in once we start. That's once you start talking to them, they draw you in with the story. That's what I'm saying. You've got to be, huh. you got to be cold with these people. Um, there's a, a torch distributor here. They've got the the cheap one copper. Really, you've just taken like a, a branch of a dead tree where all the sap has run down to one end, and you kind of file off some of the bark and put there's a little cross through it, and that way the torch will burn really well and is very wind resistant. Um, and after about 20, maybe 30 minutes, it sputters out, and it's just a, a stick. You know, it's a, a it's covered with pitch and sap though. There's a torch we're, distributor here. If we're gonna go down in that basement. We're gonna need a. A torch or something. Yeah, well, we got a lantern. No, oh, uh, yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. What if we use this, these marbles on those guys who go down the stairs? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. If we could get it open and we had them, we knew they were coming. Oh, you know, wow. we could set a trap. <clears throat> I like that. Um, let's keep going around. You know, we're here for clothes. I'm looking for someone that is selling both men's and women's clothes and has some amount of silk right so the people who deal in silk clothing um there's not going to be that many of them that are in this market because there's also the inner city market that's happening mm. um there's not it's not as big and then this time there will be people from the inner city who do come out to these other markets to check things out only the greatest of merchants the most well-connected ones are allowed actually in the inner city so you will find some people who deal in silks out here but silk is pretty rare so you've got like two Wait, quick merchants. questions mm -hmm. A merchant selling silk would sell nothing else. They would, would sell other sell things. Silk. Okay. Yeah. They would sell other things, but that would be, you know, a pretty high class thing. Silk has to be imported from like Solemn or something. It doesn't even grow here naturally. I mean, the elves had some, but they're gone now. So. Um, okay. Yeah, so you can find the two merchants here who actually deal in silk propers, and all their stuff is really nice. Uh, the silks that they have are clearly secondhand used, you know, traded around, repurposed. It might have been a gown, but now it's been carved into a, a shirt um, that shows some signs of wear, but the colors are bright, and it's been re-dyed, and it looks real nice. Um, yeah, and they will have some other clothing as well. Some other, yeah. you know, decent stuff. So. Once we've done a loop of the market, we come back to one of these places. I'm going to start browsing their, their stand and their racks, looking at some of the clothes. I want to try and pick out a couple of what I think would be the kind of thing that someone would wear in the outside of the city who is well off, but not, not like rich to be in the inner city, but just someone who has a respectable job mm -hmm. in the outer city. Yeah. Um, because we're talking about markets, and this is a great opportunity to explain how security at markets works, just so that you're aware of it for future cases and can exploit it as you need. Um, in the situation right here where we're dealing with someone who's got some like high value goods like silks, they have a temporary stall that is set up that is sort of rectangular like this. 
It has um, a tarp that is pinned down on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, and holds to this frame. And that tarp is like actually uh, like pinned down into the ground. And it's yeah, a solid canvas. It wouldn't canvas. be so easy to go through it. You couldn't walk through it. You could cut your course. way through it, but it would yeah. be very loud and very noticeable. Yeah. Um, the front side is open to the public. And then all of the wares are sort of like along this back section right here. And the dealer, the, the merchant, will have like maybe a little table. If anything, sometimes they just have like a chair and a chair back here. And they will have a, a bodyguard on yeah. this side. Who will That's have fine. a... We're not, we're not sword not doing anything shield. don't you you totally. got like a proper sword or a short sword um this bodyguard here will have an arming sword and a shield and chain mail armor this is okay. the the bodyguard of like my man has stuff of value and i am watching this stall like a fucking hawk and i will kill you if i think that you're gonna you know fuck around would they um, they'd kill you for that because there's no could. there's no authority to turn you into is there so it's like that's right what are they meant to do right um, the guard might wound horns? you. No, this is not uh, a um, a demon a slayer. Number. They might kill you. They might just wound you. They might knock you to the ground. It's going to depend on the situation, but it is very potentially a lethal danger. It doesn't mean it's always going to be murder right away, but it's well within their right and expectation that if you try to rob this place, they're going to try and stop you. And the easiest way to stop you is just to stab you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to try and pick out a couple of outfits for me and Pigeon that I think would be good for the purpose that I'm trying to find here. Yeah, totally. Well, you can, you know, browse through these shops and take a look at these wares, and you can find some things that would fit both of you that look pretty nice. Um, both of the, the two stalls will have things in your sizes, and usually you would get something that's pretty close to you, and then you take it to a tailor in town, Yeah. and they'd, like, fit it to you nicely. Oh, Luther, look at this jacket. It's just like... Let's have a look. One. I hold it up. Uh, yeah, no, it looks good. It's a bit small for me, but I look good on you. No, let me put it on. Mm -hmm. oh my I'll God. put it on. The guy doesn't say anything, right? Uh, yeah, you can You can try things on here. Um, yeah, the guy sees your you as potential customers, and he'll stand up and come on over and goes, Oh, that looks very nice on you, young man. Oh, it man. does. It really uh, draws out his eyes. Mm, mm hmm. And uh, I was thinking maybe maybe this for myself. I'd have to get the waist uh, tucked in a little bit, uh, but I think this could look good. I think that would be quite fetching. Surely your your wife won't be able to resist you in such a coat. <laughs> well, she'll do her best, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's hope he not. He doesn't have a wife. <laughs> oh, um, it's only because he has so many. Let's talk uh, brass tacks here. Um, can we? Can we? Like, is there other people browsing? Like, can we, can I go somewhere to chat with him? Um, he won't leave this stall area. There are yeah, other yeah. people in the market. There's one other person well, browsing like right next to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just mean like move over to the side a little bit. Yeah, I mean you can just talk to him at this little little stand yeah. right here. But you I'll are still going to be time. within earshot of whoever else is around. That's fine, but I just want to. I, I want the semblance of me wanting a private conversation here. Perfect. I say, um, you know, the, uh, the boy's mother recently passed away. And, oh, what uh, a tragedy. Yeah, my sister, actually. But uh, she had some rather important clients throughout the years and found herself in possession of some nice garments. And, uh, well, the boy and I could do with some nice clothes. I'm no uh, purveyor of fine goods. I don't really know exactly what these are worth but i was hoping maybe we could do a, tr a trade here perhaps and i open my bag and take out one of the silk dresses mm -hmm. and one of the silk scarves mm -hmm. and say oh, uh wow. this should be enough to cover the outfits we'll look at it i'll look at the the outfits you you've got it's a shame at the boy's loss and yours as well um, are you sure you're, you're comfortable parting with such family goods? Well, I wish I didn't have to, but I'm afraid hers was our only income. Mm, I understand. Well, you do look snapping in that, and I would be loath to see you walk away not looking quite so handsome. So yes, that's a fine trade. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, sh it. I shake his hand. Do you, could you recommend a tailor? Um, I can indeed. Yes. Um, Mr. Mutton. Uh, he lives over. Uh, oh, you know, you see that that tavern right there? Next yes. block down, three streets over on your left side. Mr. Mutton. And I'll tell them that Mr. I say pointing at him. Um, Mr. Longgrain. That Mr. Longgrain sent me. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Pleasure you. Doing business with you. I shake his hand and I uh. I condolences take the on the he... loss. Of course. Do I? Does he give me a bag or something? Uh, no, you just toss him over your <laughs> no shoulder. Bags, and your backpack. Right. There's no bags. Okay. So we've got our outfits. Can I? Can I just wear this out? Can I change Let's... here? No, that would be inappropriate. Um, did I manage to get a, a, a long coat as well, like the one I had before, Neil? Yes. Okay, perfect. So now I think we'll go to the other silk merchants, and I'm just going to try and sell the rest of the silk. Excellent. Um, you can sell the remaining silks to this guy for... After the dress, which was the really big thing, you can get eight gold and eight silver for the remaining silks. Cool. I'll pocket that. Um... Cool. I give you another three silver. Uh, three mm -hmm. gold, sorry. Uh, uh, I'll slip pigeon. three gold into my pocket then. Okay, and now I think I want to go to the tailor to get the things looking good on us and also uh, find a barber who can, you know, give Pigeon a shave and trim my beard and make us look yeah, a bit more Yeah, take care of yourself. Have a little spa day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll yeah. go to the bathhouse and I'll take a bath, you know? Oh, I, the whole nine yards. I throw my yeah. old clothing away. Oh, yeah. We're looking nice, aren't we? Get rid of the rags. <laughs> oh, well, I was actually thinking that we kind of keep this for look, for occasions when we need to look good. I'm not going to well, throw my old it. clothes away. Yeah, yeah, keep your old clothes. You don't need them for adventuring. I'm also going to buy um, <clears throat> some boots, Neil. Mm -hmm. I know that they incur penalties to climbing. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be nice to be able to wear boots around in the ruined area and like keep yes. gold in my shoes and whatnot. Yeah, because while so boots may not be great for climbing, um, they're much better if you have to run. You know, someone running in boots versus someone running in sandals. And I am. Um, can we can we role play the tailor? I just want to ask him a question. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can go over to Mister Mutton. He's got his little tailor shop uh, set up over there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I I head in and I'll wait patiently for him to look up from his work to talk oh, to him. Yeah, yeah. He's standing over a counter where he's got some clothes laid out and he's got some patterns and he's got all sorts of needles and thread everywhere. And he's got like a needle in his mouth as his like thimbled thumb is pushing through a needle, um, a different needle on an area. He looks over and he goes, you know, right there. And uh, then we'll quickly grab some pins to like hold the current fabric in its place before stopping off um, at the front of the counter to see the lot of you. Why, um, hello so there. I've got, I've got the garments in my left hand. I offer a hand to him to shake his hand, and I say, Mr. Mutton, I presume? Mr. Mutton, it is indeed. Who do I have the pleasure of addressing? I'm my name is my name's Luther. Nice to meet you. Luther and Pigeon. Distinguished gentlemen, how may I be of service to you? Thank you. Uh, yes, I've just been shopping over at uh, Mr. Longgrain's uh, stall in the markets and purchased mm. some new clothes for my my nephew and I. Yes. Uh, I was hoping that you would be able to take some measurements and fix them up for us. Absolutely. Can do. Um, now, I do have a bit of a wait. It'll be maybe five days. Yeah, but you can take the measurements today, and then we'll come back in a few days. Of yes, course, yeah. wait That's right awesome. here. Uh, but you can leave the clothes on the counter, and uh, yeah. he will go so. behind the counter again, grab a little piece of, uh, like, a wax tablet, and step out. <clears throat> and it's January, so it's cold, and he'll mutter to himself about how much cooler the wax is and how much more force you have to use to write in the tablet during the winter time. And God damn it, why, why do the gods make the wax harden so hard in the winter? Grumble, grumble, grumble. And then he'll pull out his little um, knotted string that functions like a tape measure. And he'll uh, take your measurements, your waist, your inseam, your shoulders, your back, you know, all the things. Um, yeah. And then ask you when about the fitting that you want. When he's measuring me, mm -hmm. uh, we're making small talk. And at some point I'll say, um, say, uh, Sir, I don't suppose you could recommend an accountant in town. I've recently, well, my family all circumstances have changed, and I could do with speaking to someone who knows financial matters a bit better than myself. Hmm. 
Hmm. I thought an esteemed man such as you may make use of such services. He thinks to himself. Well, don't... I have heard um, that the temple guardians are actually excellent bankers. Is that true? I, I've heard that they they have the ruins of the ancient temple with its vault still in store, um, and it's a, a safe place that one can leave money if they wish to keep it out of the hands of ne'er do wells, uh, and they charge fairly reasonable fees. Is that what you're asking for? Or are you asking for someone to like break the cipher, Nick? Well, I'm asking for someone to break the cipher. I'm trying to do it. I'm just trying to find an accountant, but uh, I, I won't push him any further for look of, for fear of looking suspicious. So I say, yeah. ah, thank you. I'll check that out, mm -hmm. and I'll let him finish his let him finish his work. Yeah, he'll finish his work. In, in my jacket, can you can you get me a a pouch over here for my coins? A pocket oh, like, on the inside of the jacket? Yeah, but like a hidden one. How hidden? I shrug. I don't know. As hidden as you can make it. Can do. Thank you. Well, uh, we shall. We'll be on our way. You said five days. Five days. Yeah. Oh, and um, the fee. Oh, yes, um, of course. <laughs> yes, it'll be four silver each. And do we pay that now or on collection? Half now, half then. Um, pay it now. Uh, leave the clothes. If you're unhappy with your work, I'm I'll happy to refund you. Slip out a gold, and I'll put it on the counter. Um, he will quickly shell out a pair of silver and slide them over. Take that. He creates his own fucking rates, so I'm not going to tip him. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, all right, well, we, we make our farewells and we'll leave. Yeah. Okay. I think, uh, given that this was the next day, maybe now we like lay low for five days, get the new clothes. I mean, maybe take a week, get some experience. Mm-hmm think maybe you should find someone to break the cipher like if we can find an engineer in the market or something like that I'm find an engineer in the market that's the thing i'm trying yeah. to think where you would go to track these people down i thought maybe a small business owner would have an accountant mm. but i suppose they don't pay taxes in the same way we do today so maybe you don't really need an accountant mm -hmm. then let's just take uh, the week off get xp and we can go and break in the thing and find someone to break the cipher later well, no, I'd like to get someone working on it. Let's let's move forward. I'm going to have a little think. There's got to be a way to find an engineer. I mean, in this part of town, Neil, is there a nice tavern where maybe yeah. more well-to-do folk would? Yeah, there's some middle-class folk living in the green zone, um, and they have middle-class taverns. We're yes. Go there. So I think let's wait for our clothes, and then we'll maybe go there and try and find someone. Okay. Sure. Because we're not, otherwise we're not going to get into the middle-class yeah, tavern in our rags, are we? Yeah. I bet those people are really struggling right now, Luther. That mom and that dad that we took these things from. Well, I do my best not to think about it. You don't take pleasure in it, do you? I think it's funny. You people think it's funny? things for me all the time. Well, that's true, I guess. But uh, just because just you had it tough doesn't mean you should want it for others. But uh, mm. who, am I, who am I to speak about morality? Think mm -hmm. what you want. Um... On Wednesday, the 17th of January, your clothes are finished. You can go and you can pick them up, and they're just as you desired. You said you wanted a secret pocket on the inside of your jacket. And so he's created a... Um, uh, there's a, a button on the the lapels of your jacket. So on the where the, where the nice. jacket would meet, there's like a little snap that you can undo, that you can slide your hand in through that to be like on the inside between the Ooh. liner and the coat. Nice. That's cool. And I can fit like a little coin pouch in there? Yeah, you can slide some money in there. The more stuff you put in there, the bulkier and the less hidden it will mingle, be. Yeah, but yeah. like, um, if you just flash your jacket, it would look like you didn't have anything. I'll take out the three gold out of my pocket mm -hmm. and I'll put it into that area. Sweet. Okay. Very nice. Uh, it is my responsibility to tell you that in 13 days, your next set of monthly expenses are coming up. That'll be three GP each since you're living in squalid conditions. Uh, yeah. Not a big deal but just as a heads up. No, nope, no, nope, yeah, no, it's good. Well, it's, you know, it's not, not a big deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's still quite a lot of money. Um, 
But, but now it's time to head to the taverns. After you've been well, yeah, but keeping low. We get some XP or? I think we've already distributed XP. We haven't. We haven't. <clears throat> so you've given it to us? Yeah. But we haven't added it. It hasn't been realized. Hasn't been realized yet. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's just kill a couple more days. We'll call it a week of downtime, rest and recovery after your robbery. And why don't we realize our gains and everyone can level up to level three. All right. Do we get to level three with three? Is 3,000 level three? What is level three? Oh, Pretty I sure think it is. It is. Might not be. I don't know. I, don't I don't remember what it is. Last what rebuild do you want? thief. Um, three thousand is indeed level yep. three. Okay. I'm cool. gonna be at three thousand four hundred forty-three and a half. Four thousand four hundred thirty-three. Down. Three thousand four hundred forty-three. Oh. Yeah. Did we already roll HP? No. No. Okay. You want to roll it first, Nick? No. Nothing gives me more anxiety than rolling HP, so. Uh, what do we get for third level, Neil? Uh, are we tracking half H half XPs right here? Two or not? You can. Do it. I'm gonna. You do it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You track every half a uh, XP. <laughs> um, you're rolling D8 for hit points, right? Okay. D8. D8, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, here's yeah. my D8. I would like an eight. Ah. <sighs> Oh man! That makes me feel better when I roll a one, though. Nice, okay. nice. Not bad. I rolled well earlier, though. It's fine. You did. We also get another fifteen percent in thief skills. Uh, you get ten points to spend on thief skills. Ten. Okay, points, and it's everything over ten costs two. Everything over fifteen costs three. Yes. Um, at the bottom there's a, a points spent total, and that should be at thirty. Okay, so I've actually got 11 this. points to spend. Yeah. Um, and I'm okay, so you're going to get your pick locks better. Oh, and right, no more than half of your points can go to any one given skill. Yeah. So I'm bringing my pick locks. Just want to make sure. Bringing my pick locks up to 15 points. It was at 13 before? Uh, it was at 10 before. I mean, just your last level. Like a moment ago, it was... It wasn't 10. You didn't just add six points. It was at 10. Yeah. No, okay. The, the total was at 14. Yes. You're spending sorry. 15 sorry, points. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yes, cool. Yes, yes. Spending five points on it for it to be at 15 points, and now the current is at 16. Perfect. Do you get an attack bonus, Neil? At level three, yes, you do. Plus one to hit. Amazing. No saves, but you do get um, a non weapon at third level. All right, I'm going to finish my reading and writing proficiency then. Excellent, Luther. Yeah. Educated man now. Thank you. We get another hit from level, you said? Sorry? Plus one to hit from level, yep. Plus one to hit, and we get a non-weapon. And a non-weapon. Uh, so, Nick, what did you do with your thief points? Oh, um, I put four points in climb. I put uh, four points in forgery. And I put two points in hide and one point in pickpockets perfect okay no. i did five points in pick locks two points in hide and three points in climb perfect okay looking good everyone looking real good i'm gonna take um set snares excellent cool just wisdom based that's not mm -hmm. very good but i'll take it it's fine so we're getting ready to go out to this tavern we're putting on our new clothes um and we're thinking about our story here so i want to have a bit of back and forth here and let, let's think about what our story is and why we're looking for a an engineer or an accountant probably do you think an engineer is better than an accountant 
I would say so. Yeah. yeah like, I don't engineering's think... more like problem solving than accountancy, isn't it? Yeah, and the only people who would need something like an accountant are going to be super wealthy, um, above middle class. So where, how would one find an engineer? Would, that, would the, an engineer have a shop? I mean, probably not, right? It's probably an engineering guild or something like that, right? Oh, in yeah, better maybe. days, probably. In, the, in this era, you would an engineer would have a place of business. Um, and there wouldn't be much in the place of business since what they, their business is mostly their mind, but they would also have some level of tools and supplies, maybe a small wood shop, um, either a go-to blacksmith or like the tiniest forge you've ever seen. Um, but they and that, would. And if that exists, it's likely to be in these green zones because this person's yes. likely to be more well off, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. And he probably even goes to this tavern. Uh, quite possibly, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is it, pigeon? When we, when the person takes this book, maybe tonight we can go to Harrow Way. I've been studying the other book that you gave me. I think I know how to break the lock. You do? Yeah. Okay. Well, just. I'm not going to give him the whole book. I've uh, I've selected a couple of pages that look unimportant, but should have enough text to allow them to break the cipher. Because we don't want them uh, snooping around in all the business. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can get this sorted tonight. Then we can go. Oh yeah. <clears throat> all right. So uh, we head out across the city to our tavern. Mm-hmm. In fact, the... maybe. Yeah. Should we go to the Redcoats area rather than the Demon Slayer area? I mean, it is closer. Yeah. I think I, it's I think too risky. Not. It's probably fine, right? In our the Redcoats area is fine. Yeah, okay. We're also on the way to Harrow Way, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. But we're not going into this tavern with all of our weapons and stuff. We're going to have to come back. No, well, we can come back, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. That's a good point, actually. How do we get to Harrow Way? in our gear without crossing through a really inhabited area and looking super suspicious. Just go through the Redcoats area at night. It's not going to be crazy. Someone might attack us, though. <laughs> well. Hmm. I guess we've got no choice, but yeah, I'm a little bit worried about yeah. that. Okay, well, anyway, we go, to, we go to this tavern, Nil. Okay. We go to the tavern. I'm just updating the overlays with your appropriate information. There we go. Excellent. Um, you can arrive at... You can arrive at the... Uh, no, no, that's a terrible Do you want me name. to name it? Please. Do you want me to name it? Yeah, do, do it. The Red Lion. Great name. Oh, it's a, a fucking name. sick name. Yeah, you get to the Red Lion. It's going to do something dumb, but this is way better. And this is in Redcoat territory, you said. Yeah. This Perfect. is like 20% of pubs in this country are called the Red or the White Line, so. Really? Yes. Uh, well, it sounds cool and exotic to me, so I'll take it. <laughs> uh, you right. arrive yes, at the Red Lion and... Is there a uh, bouncer? What's the situation? Yes. There are, there are two bouncers at the front door, one at the back door. Um, they have clubs and no armor. Um, pretty typical. Their job is to stand by and do nothing unless something needs to be done or in case, you know, crazy shit goes down. But they'd um, probably stop you going in if you were in rugs. Oh, yeah. They, they keep the riffraff out, but yeah. the riffraff know better than to come into this place to begin with. So do we so. pass the vibe check? Yeah. You have nice new clothes. You pass the vibe check. You walk on in. Sick. Okay. We find a nice little table. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after a while, I'm going to go order a drink. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to uh, tip wanna... the bartender quite well. Are there any mm -hmm. red coats in here? No. Uh, I want to vent. I want to read lips of someone who's like over there having a conversation with each other. Just to, you know, listen in on by reading lips into a conversation. Yep. That's cool. It. All right. Um, I don't think you need a check. Okay. Do you need a check? Let me read it again. Sorry. I should remember what it is. Reading lips was, yeah. Uh, read lips. Wait, where is this? Reading lips. Can understand the speech of those you can see. To use the yeah, proficiency, like that must be within 30 feet. Oh, this is the, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong. No, no this is the right, the right thing. thing. I'm looking at the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Proficiency check is made. 
So yeah, I gotta make a check. Okay, yeah, give me a proficiency check to read some lips around the room. It's a great check. Yeah, you catch about 70% of the conversation. Um, at the moment, they're talking about the weather. But you know, conversations tend to move from one thing to another. We'll cool. see where they go. Uh, in the meantime, um, Luther, yeah, so you were getting drinks and overly tipping the bartender? Yeah, so I don't know. I know that drinks and stuff is included in monthly expenses, but this is not a squalid tavern, right. so maybe we have to pay separate. Uh, so yeah, you you're... tell me how much two beers are, and I'll tell you how much I tip. Uh, two beers are a silver, sir. Fuck. Yeah, so I'll, I will pay him five silver. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I pay him three silver. I pay him three silver, because actually, that's a 50% tip, and that's fine. That's a 200% that's that's tip. Well, mine two beers for two silver. No, no, two I'm beers is it. one silver. Each beer no, is two five beers copper. is one silver. So I pay him two silver then. Excellent. Yeah, silver. yeah. You double the cost, uh, and he'll give you a well. Thank you, sir. No worries. Thanks for doing such a good job. And then I, uh, I'm also speaking with a slightly less rough version of the accent. I'm assuming everyone in this city has a similar accent, but that there is there is rough versions and softer versions. So I'm speaking with a Absolutely. slightly softer accent to signify to signal that we're a bit wealthier. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so I, I tip him, and then I think I'm going to get another drink, and I'm going to tip him the same again, so I'm going to drop another two silver. Oh. Do you need to do an acting proficiency if you're trying to put up an accent? I don't know. Do I, Neil? That's a pretty small change. If effectively, what you're doing right now is you are disguising yourself as a different social status. Yeah. Um, And so you would just be making a disguise check at Tons minus two. Minus two. Yeah, minus minus two for uh, trying to be a different social status. No, the clothes are part of it. Without the clothes, it wouldn't work at all. Does my acting proficiency give me a bonus there? This is a great question because we have the disguise proficiency and then the disguise skill and the acting proficiency, which yeah. are usually different things, but here we are merging them together. So... If both acting and disguise are known, the proficiency check for either is made with a plus one bonus. Um, I think for the social class thing, we're just going to have penalties for social classes for you. So in this case, it's still a plus one bonus. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's a minus one? Minus one. Fucking yeah, killed it, dude. Ooh, you get to pass sorry. yourself off as anything. You're fucking yeah. perfect. Okay, so on the third, on the third drink, when I go up to the bar, I order the same round again. Mm -hmm. And when the bartender comes to take, to give me my drinks, I'll say, uh, "Hey, uh, I'm new to this part of town. I don't suppose you know if there's any engineers in tonight, or if there's any that kind of have a shop around here. I've been looking around, but these places aren't well signposted." Throws his brow for a moment and goes. Uh, there's an architect. Is that good enough? It's a start, yeah. Yeah, I think his name is Thomas. I'm, in fact, I'm pretty certain his name is Thomas, and he's an architect. I've um, the the shop across the way hired him when they needed to refurbish the second story after the war. Did a pretty good right, job. Good. I think it all looks good. That's perfect. And what is he in tonight? A... I'll. I'll... Let you know when I see him, uh, when he comes in. What What's this about? Uh, well, uh, something quite interesting, actually. Um, it's a puzzle that I'm working on, that I've been working on mm. for a long time. Uh, a challenge with a friend of mine from outside of the city. And, well, I'm afraid this chap keeps getting the better of me. So I've uh, resigned myself to resorting to rather underhand tactics <laughs> and looking to get somebody to help me uh, help me win the win the competition this time round. Uh, sounds like an itch you just can't scratch. Sometimes uh, you gotta yes. borrow a friend. Sometimes it's just nice to get one over on someone that uh, pips you to the post every time, you know? That's what I always say. Damn those people who pip me to the post. Well, and, uh, uh, thanks so much for your hospitality. If Thomas does come in tonight, give me a wave, but I'll probably... Uh, Look for him in the morning, if not, and then I'll pay for this last round of drinks again, the same mm -hmm. with three with two silver. Excellent. So you paid out six silver, which is yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's worth it. And so he didn't give me any wait. directions to where Thomas is, did he? 
no, he doesn't necessarily know where Thomas is, but we've got a pretty good chance of Thomas coming by. He's an architect. He makes good money. Um, yeah. And where else are you going to go? Do you want to cook food in your own house or do you want to go not. to a tavern? Have it cooked for you. Oof. Well, it's a bad roll. So he shows he up, but he doesn't show up until pretty late. Until just about the time that the two of you are getting fucking tired and you've had to buy another two rounds of drinks to like yeah. pass the time. So shell out some more. You don't have to tip I, or you can, whatever. Have I gotten any I'll interesting bet. conversations by this point? Oh, I am. Yes. Let me roll your. I, I keep, I keep, I keep sipping him. Okay. Um, the first group that you were watching, fucking boring ass people. Give me a, a second re lip reading check. Uh, third group, second group is no good. What about the third group? 29. Um, the th this might, I don't know how interesting this is for you. It appears that one of the, the folks in this conversation of three people is, what's the word? He's from a, one of the villages north of here. Um, just a little bit out. And this guy appears to be not the mayor, but like the mayor's nephew. And so he's got some influence in the little village and he's come on in to oversee the village who, who yeah, the village trucks all their stuff in here in one big caravan because the roads are dangerous. And he like oversees the caravan coming into town. And then he likes to come into town and kick it with the locals for a while. And he's meeting new people in this tavern um, and shaking hands and rubbing shoulders and asking people what they do and looking for a way that maybe his business people of his village can make some connections with some people in the town and you know is there any is there any way i can advent interesting my business my, okay. my my village what is it that, that guy over there is not from here he's he's out of town and i'll explain to him like he's out and he's coming in here to like rub shoulders i don't know if you want to tell him something but he, he sure as hell doesn't know who you are Tell him what? Kind of shrug. I don't know. I was thinking you could just tell him like you're, you're noble or something, and he'll. Oh yeah, like suck up to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, uh, we got some time to kill till Thomas gets here, but not sure getting ourselves in any trouble here is what we want to be doing. All right. I take a mental note of the guy. Um, yeah. That's useful. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, what, can I get his name through like through hearing him across the bar? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, his name is Roy. Roy. Mm -hmm. uh, from, okay, cool. I got a little note. Um, I want to... I don't know where we're sitting, but over the course of the night, I want to try and change table to one that's a little bit more secluded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the evening wears on, more tables open up, and you can move from whatever you've got to a, a more quiet spot. Um, and so uh, you let me know when Thomas turns up, yeah? Yeah, it's later in the evening, by right around the time the two of you are getting close to giving up for the night, um, that a man will walk in and the bartender will grab your eye and, and point to him. I give him a little acknowledgement nod. Mm -hmm. uh, I wait for Thomas to get himself a a drink and sit down. Yep. And I, I wait for him to get him about halfway through his drink. And then I'm going to stand up and go over to his table. Mm-hmm. And I uh, say, uh, I, I I come up to the side of his table and I say, Mr. Thomas, I assume, and I offer a hand. Mm -hmm. He'll take your hand and go, Thomas is the name, architecture is the game. Uh, who nice are you? to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. My name's, uh, my name's Luther. Uh, could I perhaps buy you a drink and maybe you could come and sit with my, my nephew and I? A wave. Hi. Can I ask what this is about first? Uh, well, it's for a job. But oh, why did you say so? Of course, yes. more unusual. Yes. yes, okay. I shall give you the details over there. Yeah, of course. I uh, I give it like a wave to the to the bartender and I sort of signal that we both to get to mm -hmm. get Thomas a drink. Yeah, yeah. The bartender will come over by, come by over. He'll, he'll set down Thomas as usual. He'll bring you the same things that you've been drinking. Um, and I pop and he'll give like an approving time, nod. I uh, an extra silver for Thomas's drink, is it? Five copper for Thomas's drink. Yeah, so, okay, so I, just, I pay him the, I pay him the, I pay him the two silver again. Mm -hmm. So it's a slightly smaller tip, but it's a slight because generally because it's a slightly sure. bigger round. Yeah. I uh, I say so. 
Thomas, you'll have to excuse the uh, unusual nature of my request here. I'm afraid I'm not in the market for an architect, but more for a, a keen mind, someone who's good at solving problems. I'm listening. Uh, I have a friend from outside of the city, um, and he and I have been involved in a sort of back and forth over the years, uh, one-upmanship, solving puzzles, riddles, cracking ciphers, things of this regard. And I'm afraid that in my more recent years, my friend has uh, gotten the better of me mm. on the majority of these occasions. And, well, a rather drunken night, maybe some uh, heated words and some bravado has led me in a position where uh, I don't really feel like I can lose this next round, if you know what I mean. And I I do apologize, sir, for a man of such fine standing as yourself to be involved in such uh, unfair practices is maybe uh, not what you would usually like to do. But do uh, do take my word for it that this is all in, in good jest and he and I remain close friends. I don't think this one's solvable. I shrug. So my my question of you, Thomas would be uh, for the cost of some gold would you be prepared to uh, work on a puzzle over the next day or two for me see if you can uh, make progress well this is a very tempting offer uh, but how are you going to feel if I cannot solve this if you can't solve it then uh, why don't we do it like this I'm assuming, I mean, I know more than any other, that there is joy in solving puzzles and cracking something like this can be a, can be a great rush of adrenaline. So how's of this? Uh, will you tell me what your fears? I'll pay you half. Uh, if you crack the code, if you solve the puzzle, I'll pay you the other half. Everyone's happy. If you don't, then I save some of my money. You don't have to feel like you've ripped me off. Everyone's happy. Hmm. He rolls his employment status. I'm between jobs at the moment, so <laughs> sure. Waiting for a new job to come by. I could afford to take some time to work on this. Um, my my growing rate is twenty silver a day. Very I don't good. know how complicated well. this is, but I will give you a. Do you have an upper limit on your budget? Well, let's call it three days for now. I'll give you, I'll give you th three gold now, and in three days' time, if you solve it, I'll give you another three. Done. Okay. I hand him three gold, and then uh, I produce the two pages from the book that I've pulled. And this is a little bit sketchy, right? Because I actually don't know what's in this. No, you have no fucking clue. And it could be rather incriminating. So I'm trying to think of a good story as to what. Now, if I recall correctly, the book on. had a lot more pages, but you've just pulled two pages out, right? This is not yes. the entirety of the writings. No. And these are not no. two pages sequentially either. They are right. from two different parts of the book, so hopefully they don't give too much information. And it's not the pages with the keys listed either. I'm hoping to find some preamble at the start that I've used here and some sort of like you know, thoughts or something at the end. I'm trying to find, I'm doing my best to try and find what I think is the least incriminating. And I appreciate that that's very hard to do, but that's what mm -hmm. I have attempted to do. Mm -hmm. He looks at it, looks and at so you say, and goes, this is the, this is the puzzle. Yes, it's a cipher. It's a, a copy of a notebook. I'm not even sure where it's, where it's from. Rumor is that it's a, uh, has some sort of history with this city, but uh, uh, to be honest, we're just in it for the challenge, really. But uh, the plot, I want to be able to crack the cipher. There is clearly repeated symbols here. I mm -hmm. think that this mm -hmm. is probably a uh, a fixed adjustment cipher or something similar where every word has been shifted a set number. I'm, well, I've struggled with it for a while. I'm hoping that maybe you can, you I'll can give see it past a look. some of its complexities. Absolutely. Fantastic. And so, uh, well, the great thing about this job, it's something you can work on whilst in the pub. So. <laughs> well, why don't I meet you here uh, three days hence and round sunset. Sounds great. Well, Thomas, uh, we've been here 
for a few hours now. Uh, we're up to our eyes in beer, so I think we'll stumble home. But uh, it's been nice to meet you, and I look forward to seeing you in three days' time. Splendid. Ooh. Okay. I shake his hand, and then... Uh, he shakes your hand. Me, me and Pigeon shall leave. Excellent. Come on, hurry. Let's go. Let's go. I've been okay. waiting all night. All right, so I think we're going to head home and uh, get yeah. our gear and head out. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fine. Uh, Mr. Nicholas, roll me a D100. Come on, Nick. Don't fuck this up. Oh, this is big Steven. Go! Holy! We're going to take a break. We'll be back on the other side of the break, if breaks are even included in these VODs. Welcome back to Hardly Heroes, everybody. Okay, let's go. We've we've given the guy the job. That seems to be working. Went really we've well. We've got our gear. So I've got my chainmail on. I've got my short sword. I've got my bandolier of daggers. I've got my normal rag clothes on mm -hmm. below my chainmail. I got my and I've got my I've got my overcoat over that. I got my marbles. And this is the same day that you're going. This is the day that you're going to go pick up the cipher. Yeah, because I think Pigeon's getting impatient. No, no, this yeah. is the this is the same night that we go. Oh, to that same architect. night. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we've got three days to get Come this on, done. Come on, Luther. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, Pigeon, Pigeon, just. Just be a little bit more cautious. We don't know what's going to be down there. What? There's nothing down there. They never come up with anything. All right. Well, you know, I'm just saying. Let's not get ourselves killed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we head through the Redcoats area. Mm-hmm. And through Haraway. Yeah. Okay. Through Redcoat area... All the way back near your own home base, back to Haraway in the ruins in the northeast of town, destroyed during the siege of the undead. That's right. And you can pick your way. Oh, wait, no, that's not what was happening. That's what was happening, but then you rolled an encounter check and you rolled a Correct. three. I figured that was yes. in Haraway, but yeah. I had forgotten about the encounter check. Well, I could be in the red coats, Sarah. I took a. I took a little break to get myself a drink and forgot all about what was happening. I um, guess they forgot to ambush us, so we're good. <laughs> Can I, I get? They were, taking a, they were taking a little drink as we walked past. You know, you I didn't notice. Uh, I would just want a D10 from Mr. Mooten. Okay, my surprise adjust is two. Great. There you go. Excellent. Okay. The, yeah. Wait, I never know. Is surprise low or high? I don't you know. Want? You want high. Fast. Uh, His adjustment of two is a bonus of two, but I think it might yeah. be marked as a... Mi it's... Yeah, okay. Fine. You're good. It's good. But it was a bad roll. But it was a bad roll, though. It was a bad roll, roll but he's got good better. bonuses. So, yeah. should be fine, right? Problem. Hopefully. Um, yeah. You begin to go through the, the ruin... Or not through the... Through the, the regular part of town, away from the green zone, away from the Redcoat territory. You make your way near to the ruined section of town uh, when Lucas, Pigeon, those big, wide eyes of yours. Now, underneath... You got a hat. Didn't you get a hat? Uh, if you let me buy a hat from the place where we bought our clothing, mm -hmm. then yes. Yes, Otherwise, I thought you would. No. We talked about hats, and so I just assumed you yeah, had bought one. Me, yeah. yeah, but underneath the brim of your broad hat, um, shielded from the gentle rain that is coming down this evening, you can see that there is a, a pair of folks hanging out well over here somewhere where you're walking that do one of the like, hey, what's with those two? And kind of point in your direction um, and then watch you. And you're walking, you know, sort of across the path. But you notice as you are walking that way, the two of them get off of the post that they're leaning against and start heading oh, there we got vaguely problem. in your direction. Wait, so where are we at the moment? Are we through the right? Are we in the abandoned area? Or are we no, no, no. In you're, ruins? you're in the regular area on your way. Um, and when you okay. get to about do here I or something, people? you didn't even see them. Do they have copper on them? Um, perception check? Can you give me you a perception props? check right here. 27? You know, they... They don't look like copperheads. They're not wearing copper clothing. They don't seem to have any, like, copper, shinery, shiny things on them. They just look like typical ne'er-do-wells. Okay. So you say to me, we've got trouble, I say. Why, what's wrong? 
There's two guys coming towards us. And I'll kind oh. of point in the direction, like, mm -hmm. I'm pointing at them, and they can see it. They well, know that I know that they're there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I think we turn down an alley. Mm hmm Yep, you can turn down a, a, an alleyway. And then, an, and then take another turn. I think we try and do some quick turns, and then try and look for somewhere to hide. Yeah. Okay. Give me a... Um... Hide check? Uh, yeah. Why don't you guys give me a hide check at... You're going to have some major bonuses oh. here. Um, Because your head start is essentially going to function as prepared cover and abundant cover. Mm -hmm. So I need you to do it at plus eight. You're good. Okay. So yeah. Can you relink me this document? I cleared my cookies and lost all of my... Of course. Here, it's in the Hardly Heroes cast. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, with your your plus eight from being well ahead of them and having enough time to hide in a good spot, uh, you can wait in whatever little place you find. You never hear from them again. You can move on. Okay. Yeah, we move on. Good. Yeah, you get through your way through the ruins. You get back to the streets known as Harrow Way, and you come back to the building that you have visited many times before yeah. with the angry doorman. So First thing is eavesdropping yep. to the window slash under the door. Mm -hmm. there's only just to the make door, sure yeah. there's no one in there. Which one of you is going to do that? I have eavesdrop 10 points, Moose. What do you have? You're the one who does it. Yep. So I, I eavesdrop just to try and see if I can hear anyone beyond mm -hmm. the door. Not trying to work out conversation, just trying to see if I hear anyone. Yep. Yep. Get a three, nope. obviously. Nope, okay. that's good. I check <laughs> yeah. the door. Is it locked? Yeah. Okay. I'm going yeah. to start. Uh, yeah, okay. Like, we're remembering the axe trap, correct? Like, yeah, we're not oh, yeah, triggering absolutely. the axe trap. Yep. Just letting And I know that. how to not do it this time, correct? Yep. Yeah. yep. I'm going to grab the thing and whatnot. Easy um, peasy. Here's my pick locks. I don't think you I'm already You already picked it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't even need to pick locks. This just takes you some time. Your lock now. picking skill is now 16. Yep. That's good. It's better, and I have infinite. I've picked this lock, I think. This is my third or fourth time now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Can... So we get in, we disarm the trap, we close mm -hmm. the door behind us, we lock it behind us, do we? I have a question. The trap mm -hmm. was set. Yes or no? Yes, it was set. Okay. Then, yeah, I lock it behind us, and I'm going to reset the trap. All right. And then we head through into that back room where the trap door is. Ah, the trap door. There it is. Looking at you. Waiting yeah, for you. As he squirks on the lock, I get my lantern out. I'm mm -hmm. going to check for traps first. Yeah. Um, 16. X. Oh, I think I do roll it for check for traps, sorry. Yes, you will roll for check. 21. Yeah, just like last time, you don't notice any traps. And I pick it. And I'll you set down to work on this. All right, we're getting rid of him. <laughs> yeah. That's really now, bad. You have a 16 in pick locks. Yep. This lock is a 15 strength. It's an excellent lock, which means it'll take you 2d8 hours to pick with unlimited time. Like if, if you're just picking the lock and only the lock. Yep. Uh, and right now it's sort of evening. So this is not a great time to start picking the lock, especially because Why? you only have so much lantern oil. Well, it's, it's late. He's been busy all day. He's been doing stuff, right? He, it's yeah, You get tired at, at three pub. in the morning, four in the morning. The pub. But I think it's I true. got the adrenaline going because I, we're finally going to get in here, you know? Okay. I think all it's right. fine. Like, yeah, I think yeah. we make it work. I know okay. we have got limited lantern oil. I try and do conserve the lantern oil if I can. Yeah, you keep the lantern as low as possible. You can, like, lower yeah. the wick with the, the turning of a knob. Um, so it barely illuminates the area, just enough for him to work with. And you're going to sit back and probably fall asleep, stay awake for yep. sometimes. Um, 2 to 8 yeah. hours is a long time. Would I you roll it? it? We're yeah. going to do it no matter what. Yeah, unless there's right. a problem. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Oof, okay. Usually you'll roll it, but no matter what, I'm staying here as long as it takes is the goal. Right. It's going to be ready maybe about midday then. So once the sun comes up, Neil, I will uh, obviously turn the lantern off. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Wait, is there any light in, is there any light in this house? You said there's mm -hmm. no windows. No, you okay, need the lantern so going the whole time. Okay. Yeah. It'll take so ten hours. Time of day didn't matter. Uh well the regards. only for your exhaustion and making yeah. decisions and possibly falling asleep. Um but it's yeah. fine, well, I think. I allow myself to get to sleep, yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. You go to sleep, he works on the lock. You wake up sometime later. He's still working on the lock, slowly cursing and muttering to himself, I imagine. Um, and maybe you go and fetch some breakfast for the party. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, there's no food on risky. hand. Yeah, we go without food. Yeah, yeah no one's yeah. eaten all night. No one's had anything I, I, to drink. I think, like, depending on what's down here, if it's like an, a, an, a long passageway into the darkness, then maybe we leave it and come back when we're more rested and have good food. If it's like a, just a, a hideout with some loot, then we're good. I feel like I might send you to go get us food because I'm just picking the lock. Yeah. It's risky though, no? Walking around. We've only own. seen him, I guess. I'm, it's, like I'm in yeah. full, my full gear and stuff. I just feel yeah. like it's... You can't uh, just go to the... Yeah, that's right. That's fine. Well, I, mean, we I could leave it. my I could leave my armor and my weapons here, I suppose. This is the what conversation we have. Yeah, know. like how, mechanically, Neil, how bad is it if we don't eat? Mechanically, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. So I think we just we can. Um, we can I mean, we're but poor. it's discomforting. We can go a day without eating. Yeah, but we had a good meal last night. We're about yeah. to be fed by all the gold that we get down here. There you yeah, go. you can easily go a day without food. Not even hard. Not a problem. Yeah. Unless there's some sort of food-related trap down here, but that's unlikely. Yeah. It's very unlikely. Luther, I got it. You did? Oh, oh finally. My God. I'm careful and I Good work, slowly Pigeon. swing the door open. Mm-hmm. It lifts. It's heavy. It's metallic. And shine the lantern down the stairs. Yeah, you can turn up the wick on the lantern. You're looking at the, the oil level. There's not a ton of time left on this oil, but it's enough to at least get down this uh, staircase, which it is a staircase. I'll yeah. check for traps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Want another one? Yeah, give me another lock picking check. Yeah, it's there great. No tra There's no traps right there. Fantastic. It's good to know that we're safe. I'll go first, uh, excitedly. Mm -hmm. And confident that there's no traps. Yeah. All right. Let me just take a look at this. Excellent. You head down this staircase that descends maybe eight feet underground, maybe maybe 10 feet. Probably closer to 10 or 12 feet, actually, now that you're counting the steps and looking up. The stairway is made of um, wood. The ground here is... The floor in this room is dirt. The walls are mostly dirt, but there's some, like, wooden boards that go between posts and columns and, and beams. And then wall wooden posts that, like, kind of try to help hold up the walls. But it looks like an improvised tunnel, like... Um, like a crappy mine shaft through the dirt. It doesn't yeah. look like a really sturdy. It does not look like the sort of tunnel that should have this sort of trap door on the top. There's a a disconnect here in the craftsmanship. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Come on, Luther. Come on. Does it look like maybe this was once a basement of a nice house and it's been extended? No. Because it's a tunnel, it's not a room. It's a staircase down and then a straight shot forward. Okay. Well, we, we make progress down the corridor. I, I have one mind on how long we've been walking for. I don't want to walk forever down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, pretty quickly, you can tell that you are leaving the territory underneath this house. You are going yeah. underneath whatever houses are behind this. You're probably crossing a street and going under some other buildings that are over there. Um, and then their tunnel makes like a an awkward you know, 20 degree angle or something for maybe 20 feet before you come across a stone wall. Okay, and how long have we been walking at this point? 200 feet, maybe 300 feet. Okay, oh, okay, okay, not far. And it's not just, far. So it's just a corridor that just dead ends in a stone wall? No, the wall has been broken down in the middle. It looks like oh. somebody dug this tunnel and then broke through a wall that the tunnel dead, end, it dead ended into. Probably somebody else's basement yeah. that they've burrowed into. Okay, eavesdrop. 
I want to listen into this tunnel and make sure we're not walking into a den of red coats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my not God. a red coat in sight or in sound. It's perfect. Well, but, but bear in mind, bear in mind that this skill check is to pick up actual conversation. So if I'm just listening for noise, there should be bonuses. Totally. Yeah. Not a noise to be heard. You're good, okay. buddy. Okay. Keep going. You want to check for traps? Yeah, I'll check for traps at the wall. Do I see anything? At the wall? Um, yeah, give me a lockpicking yeah. check. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Just fucking rolls. Like, you, okay, dude. Look at, I just this campaign is cursed. I just want to say the rolls. 10, 11. Those are our best rolls. Then we got a 5, a 3, a 6, a 5, a fucking 2, a 7, and a 4. Ridiculous. It's crazy. It is crazy. We continue on. At least your good decision making will save you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you, you don't so have to pass. Still going. Yes. Yeah. You do not have to pass beyond the threshold of this stone wall to realize where you're entering into. Because where you've walked into is a tomb. That is to say, it's like the crypts underneath maybe an old abandoned temple. Although judging about the stuff above you, it's probably a ruined temple and there is no way back down into the crypts. But here is a hallway that goes left and a hallway that goes right. And there are little doors along the sides of the hallways where you could open up and a body would probably be tucked inside those doors. And judging by the fact that there are like heavy wooden doors banded with metal that hold these areas closed, you're pretty certain that these are like the nicer tombs from for nicer people. Maybe not nobles, but like middle class or maybe upper middle class folks might be buried here. There. Let me check one. This is a bit strange, isn't it? Probably where they're storing their stuff. Come on. I'll go to the first one on the wall. Mm -hmm. I am cautious. He runs off. Yeah. I stay at it's, the. It's right I stay in front at of the, you. Mm -hmm. I stay at the crossroads and kind of like watch our back and watch the other direction. For traps. Um. There's no <laughs> traps. <laughs> it's closed with just a pin that runs through. Like you've got. Um, two pieces of metal, and then the door swings closed between them, and then you just drop a pin between all of that. Uh, but the pin's not locked in any way, shape, or form. Okay, I take it out, and I'll open it. There's not but dead inside. You see the skull of a skeleton, because it's, you know, the skeleton's been slid in feet first, head out in your direction. So you open the door, and there's just like, a skeleton's head. It's dark in there, right? Um, yes. I come in and shine the lantern just to see if they've like tucked anything down the bottom end of the skeleton. If it, it's just the skull, or is there also the body? Oh no, there's a body in there, but like there was. Yeah, so I, I shine the lantern down the shaft to see if they've like hidden gold or stashed mm. something down there. Ah yes. Before you say anything, I'm gonna move the stuff, no matter what. Like, if he says, like, oh, there is gold, I'm going to be moving the bones anyways. But if, if you say right now, you don't see anything, I'm still going to move the bones. Okay. Well, you would need to see... I am. You'd need to see the... You'd need to move the bones to see if there were things, right? Yeah. Because the bones are okay. going to block your view. So you pull the lantern up and peer in. Mr. Mooton's got the door open already. He's peering in. Um, and that is when the being inside begins to move. And our initiative roll will determine if you can Holy act before shit. them. Holy shit. You mean the, the, the skeleton is coming yeah. to life? Is that, what, is that what's happening? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, um... I would probably pull out my dagger. Um, I want to roll a dagger initiative, but I want to try and use it as a, like I'm going to try and use the 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 blunt the end of the hammer, to, like of the dagger, to just like smash the skeleton skull. Yeah, of course, that sounds That's great. Still two initiative though, right? Yep. Going first is pigeon. <sighs> and I'm gonna attack it with my dagger. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ten. Uh, 10, I think you probably get some bonuses for the skeleton being okay. prone. Not a problem. You easily strike the skeleton. Four. Uh, you will right across him okay. for four damage. Luther. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, it's a hit. You'd get plus four for him being prone. Maybe like a penalty for 
using the pommel instead of the thing, but either way, it's gonna still gonna be hit. Um, and you can go ahead and deal your damage. Bludgeoning Excellent. Damage. Bludgeoning damage. What do you have the plus one from? Strength. Strength. Oh, strength. Cause he's a strong boy. Uh, I don't know how oh, I deleted this. I fought one of these there. already. What? Oh, you didn't tell me about that. I mean, you must have told me about that. The skeleton's not dead. This is not the time for no, conversation no. because the skeleton um, does what skeletons do best. It, as you're like stabbing at it and trying to bash it, in the meantime, it is reaching out and just like grabbing the 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 edge of the wall, and it slides itself back into the party as you're you know jumbling with it and stabbing at it. Um. And does, does that, wait, I, I feel like I that gives like an attack, attack of opportunity, attack of opportunity as well. <laughs> like it's just he's like moving into our space. Yeah. Yes. But also the two of you shouldn't be able to stab into a tiny hole. So maybe one of the attacks that you've already made is this opportunity attack coming in because you can't both stand over, you know, a, a okay. tiny little three by three and stab at it. Um, so Nick will say that your nine was your opportunity attack mm -hmm. and Luther not Luther. Pigeon, Pigeon, give me an uh, opportunity attack here. Hit. Uh, that'll hit. And that will be enough. Um, nice. So it begins to slide out and it begins to bumble into you, but you break the skeleton into pieces and it crumbles to the ground at your feet. Oh my god. That was, uh, well. Is there anything in there? <laughs> <laughs> I look. Is there anything in there? Um, you see a pair of copper coins that have fallen to the ground and some so rotten clothing. Let's and... get the bones back in there. Yep. Yeah, okay. We get the bones back in, we close Take it. Take the coins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try the next one. I don't so know. The, these two corridors, Neil, do we see the ends of them? Your is lantern the, is, the... is low on fuel. You're conserving its light. If you want to turn it up to max, you can. Um, and yeah, no. that'll give you a 60-foot range. If there's more to it. I just want to work out if there's more to explore here. Oh, yeah. It, this is just the beginning. These catacombs yeah. could be huge, or they could be pretty small, but you can look 30 feet in either direction and see nothing but tombs. What do you say, Pigeon? Let's uh, head back. We'll get some more lantern oil, get some rations. Let's open one more. One more. One more. Okay. All right. I'll go... I... Five. Wait, Neil, I want to. I look for like a rock or something. Yeah. Um, there's oh, some okay. of the broken stone wall that you can pull. I hand that to Pigeon and I find another one for myself. Okay, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I go four down because that's my lucky number and I go and I. Well, something's going to happen before you get oh. there because you go four down and in the process, you come across an area where there are locks on sarcophagi instead of uh -huh. just like little. Uh, pins that hold them in place. The pins are are clearly there just to keep the doors from opening, yeah. and God forbid if the undead, if the dead ever come back to life from getting out. But these ones are locked, and that maybe that's red coats, or maybe those are valuable bodies that people wanted to keep, and there's goods on them, but they might spring to life and attack you. I, Is there a way to tell from the age of the lock whether it's a new lock, newer than the two? Hmm. Well, Mr. Moon, can you make me a successful lock picking check to investigate the age of these locks? Of course I can. Course no, you, you cannot. Can. <laughs> um, can I try? Wait, let me try. Yeah. Yes. Boom. <laughs> yes, come on. Well, yes. he's a blithering idiot because obviously these are new locks. <laughs> okay, so it does, I say, this kind of Not seems like the red clothes have locked this. Let's get it open. I start yeah. opening uh, one of them. Well, let's get the let's survey, the, traps, survey traps, the situation traps, traps. here. There are 10 of these. Oh, baby. Let's go back. Let, let's go back. Let's get our supplies and come back and do them all at once. I'm opening one. There's a risk. There's a risk that if we open one, we trigger some sort of alarm and we can't come back for the next 10. Okay, Luther. Okay. <sighs> Pigeon. If they're all Rose. empty, I'm sorry when we get back. <laughs> I'm going to, like, okay. fix we, up the dust on the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look like we haven't been here. I'm going to repin it, Neil. Exactly. Mm hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to put my rocks back in mm -hmm. the spot. Mm -hmm. And we're going to head out. Yeah, uh, we make it back to the hatch with just the last bit of lantern light. Yeah. Would the pair of you make me intelligence checks? Oh, fuck. And yeah, don't worry about why. Time. It's fine. 21. Okay, thank you. That means I don't have to make it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. These are these are fake checks. They mean nothing. Um, You can leave. Easy peasy. 
You head how back out the way it, you came? As we're going back, how long is it going to take you to relock this trap door? I, I, Nathan, I, I don't think we should relock it. I think we should just go get our food, get our lantern oil, and come back right now. Okay, let's be quick. Yeah. Wait, in fact, all right, you hide, take my armor and my weapons, and we're going to get the stuff. I'll come back. Right. I'll be quick. I'm going to cl I'm going to like close the door, Neil. I know Wait, in the in the upstairs, right? On the ground level. We're back in the room mm -hmm. where I've seen him close it before. Mhm. Mm um, I'm going to hide near it and if I hear someone picking the lock at the front door, then I'm going to close it. Okay, so, so the trap the door is door. left open. Yes. Judging by the the look of this door, it can be closed without automatically locking. Like the lock has to be a key has to be put in and adjusted. Not gonna do that though. Okay. Um, so you leave the hatch open. Yeah. You're in the room. You're listening in case someone tries to pick the front door. But or the front door is coming up from the basement. That's right. what I'm also worried of now. Is the the front door locked? Are you locking it after Luther leaves? I lock it after he leaves. Do you set the trap? Yes. Okay. And I tell Luther, Luther, when it's you, I want your knock to be like this. And then it'll be like four knocks, and then he'll wait three seconds, and he'll do like one more. Okay. So we've got a secret knock. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay. Uh, this is somewhat trivial, but I will... I'm going nowhere near my house, right? I'm going directly west. Mm-hmm into the blue area or wherever I have to totally. go to, to, yeah. to buy lantern oil and Russians. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, you're heading in that direction. For you, it's uh, kind of a, a gentle rainy day back out in the mm -hmm. city. Um, kind of calm, fairly peaceful. The streets are quiet. No one likes to be out in the rain. You've probably borrowed Pigeon's hat to keep the rain off of your head because... You know, who wants to get wet in the middle of the day? I wouldn't be called dead in my heart, so... That's okay, funny. never mind. You get yourself <laughs> all wet. Uh, and you can make yourself... You, you left your weapons behind. You left your coat behind. No, I wear my coats. I leave my chainmail behind. Okay. Yeah, roll me a D100. But it's fucking raining, you know, so it's okay to wear a big coat. Totally. Let's yeah. go, Nick. Yeah, 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 you get into the green zone, you find a, a grocer, you find a general store, you find all the things you need, you can buy some lantern oil. Um, if I wanted to buy two clubs, would that be straightforward or not? Yeah. Actually, wait, we're not, prof we're not proficient in clubs, are we? We're not, no. So it'd be a waste of time. Waste okay, of time. Yeah, forget it. I get the lantern oil, I get the rations. I'm talking like two days rations. And enough lantern oil to like for it to burn for like twelve hours on a good flame. Yeah. If that's not insane, that's not like an insane. That's not insane. Um, Nick, I had a big brain idea that I don't want to forget. Why Kobe looks this up? <clears throat> yeah. When you get back, let's uh -huh. say we get down there and everything's fine, right? Yeah. We need to clear out another one of those tombs so that if they do come down there for some fucking reason. We can hide inside. Oh, that's big brain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, what if they came? You know. Where would we do? Yeah. What would we do? We'd be in the tomb. Well, where would we put the skeletons? <clears throat> we could. I mean, we can just like put them in there with us, right? I don't know. Is there, like, there going to be space? I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Maybe we've got to kill three, so we can stash okay. the other two skeletons in the third one. Makes sense. To Makes leave sense. those two empty. Yeah. yeah. Genius. <laughs> you, okay. Your lantern is a, a hooded or a beacon lantern? Hooded. Okay. So that's the, no, that's the more normal one, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that is two hours for each pint of oil that you buy, and it'll spread light for 30 feet. Um, during our expedition here, you had turned it down to just be barely burning at all, so you could see, um, but it provided yeah. practically no light. So it's two pints for, sorry, it's one pint for two hours? One pint for two hours. So I'll oh, buy six pint. pints if I can. Okay. And oil is two silver per pint. So that's 12 silver. How and much that weigh? Food? 12. Uh, each pint is a pound. Okay. So. Lantern oil. 
How much are the hard rations? Uh, ration. Standard ration is two silver per day, per person. So um, six pints. Anyway, one each. That's fine. Yeah, Sorry, we can just fold the food. Much? Don't worry about it. You, we're okay. doing monthly food. Yeah. You buy some food. Yeah, yeah, but we're doing monthly food. Is like, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, with my lanterns and rations and so, I head back to Haraway. Okay. It's fine. You make your way to Haraway. Give me a D10 roll. Uh, this is such great D&D. I'm having such a good time with this campaign at the moment. He's about to kill you. Oh. Cool. <laughs> you get back to Haraway. No problems whatsoever. You get back to the door. How do you knock on it, Nick? Uh, I can't hear any of that. Okay, four short, four knocks in a row, and then a three-second gap, and then one more. Perfect, beautiful, absolutely love it. Unlock the door. Yep, you can unlock the door. You can disarm the trap. The whole party's back together now with food. Um, you can you know drink some water out of a puddle outside and yeah. get ready to to do this thing. All right, I we close the door. Down. I reset the trap. I lock the door, and we go back down. So you know the uh, the trap door is it a lock built into the trap door like a like a yes. old school door? It's not like a padlock. Correct. It's built one into the door. One other thing I do as we're going down, I'm putting marbles on the stairs. Yeah. Hmm. On the top stairs, top few yeah. stairs. Yeah. Excellent. Top few stairs. And if someone locked it on the outside, could I pick lock it on the inside? No, there is no way to lock it or unlock it from the inside. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then I am... Luther, we should close it. That's what they did. Yep. So I'm going to close it. And I'm going to put the marbles there. Yeah. At the, on the stairs. And we're going to go. All yeah, right. It's perfect. It's so perfect. We're going to so die perfect. down here, but it's going to be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Inside we go. We're going to switch it from the outside. Gentle, rainy music. Okay. Are we doing your plan move? We're going to kill two of the skeletons first. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Okay. We pick some rocks back up. <clears throat> Excellent. I'm assuming we can be proficient in rocks. We should be able to. Yeah, I think so. I think you can smash a skeleton that's laying without any problems with the rock. Yeah. It took a while to wake up as well. So I think if we just get open it and smash its skull, we should be fine. We kill two more skeletons. We take all of the skeletal remains and we put them into one. We close it. So we've now got two empty ones. Now we got two empty ones next to each other. Let, let's just do a couple of dice rolls. There's a yeah, chance yeah, that you fine. miss all of your attacks oh, and, you know, okay, and the skeleton so he, he, mauls you. He opens it. I've got the rock ready. As soon mm -hmm. as he opens it, I'm smashing skulls. Yeah, give me an attack roll right away. So this is why This is why we roll the dice for initiative and everything. Now we'd roll initiative um, because uh, the skeleton is beginning to act. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mooton, um, Luther is still sort of blocking your way here. Oh, sorry. I rolled. I'll take the roll. Um, the skeleton yeah. begins to pull itself out. You wildly <laughs> miss. Luther gets that his attack of opportunity. Um, hit? With it being prone, it's a hit. How much the damage on a rock? D3 plus one? Uh, one for your strength, yeah. Yeah. Is it D3 or D4? I think it's D3. Two damage. Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. It is ridiculous, the dice have been rolling It's today. crazy. I, it it's is crazy. crazy. It is. It is beyond the pale. D20, two, three, three, nine, eight. Like, it is crazy. <laughs> I, I wish that I could map my, wow. my rolls over the lifetime yeah. playing this game. Yeah, cool. So you kill one skeleton. This one dies immediately. No problems. Next we one. go to the next one. Repeat the same process. Luther, start oh. off with an attack roll. No, that's, that's a hit. hit. That's, that's a great a hit. hit. We're hitting them with a, a three And you kill it. One. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Oh, All right, third skeleton? Or you? No, no you only no. need to kill those it. two. We only need We're to done. kill all right, so and we'll I assume you this is skeletons. an XP farm. We might, we might as well. Yeah, we'll keep going. <laughs> nah, skeletons are worth like seven XP or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we dump the three skeletons in one grave, close yeah. that, and now we've got two uh, empty graves next to each other that if we need to, we can hide in. Excellent. I check. How easy will it be to close this from the inside? 
Um, I'm going to let you do that, and I'm going to go start checking for yeah. traps and then picking a lock. Yeah. No. Time is up. Yeah. You would need okay. to, like, pull it and hold. then let I'm go and let closed. its momentum hold it, clo pull it closed. But then it might also hit and bounce back off. There's literally nothing on the inside to grasp it and pull it all the way closed with. Makes sense. If you had really. a nail or a pitten or something, maybe you could work with it. Did anyone bring pittens and a hammer? Well, you... Um, hold on. I, I've got a crowbar. I unironically might have. A crowbar won't uh, help you. <clears throat> no, but there's, like, the little metal thing, right? Well, I don't know what that means. The pin. The, the pin. pin. Oh, it's a wooden pin. Yeah. It? Oh, it's a wooden pin. It's just a, yeah, it's just a piece of wood to hold it shut. No, I don't have it. Whatever. Okay, well. It's, yeah. it's fine. It's, it's fine. Anyways, fuck it. Uh, okay. I check for traps. Here's my roll. On the, the big, fourth one. one of the fancy yes. ones. Okay. I'm starting on the fourth lock. Okay. Nice. Oh! Classic. There's no traps here, buddy. Okay, nice. I pick it. Um, as you're looking for traps, you'll notice a marking on the the door that isn't on the other doors. Can I get everyone to make me an intelligence check? Just on this number four specifically. Yeah. Nice, Nick. Let's fuck. Let's go. Fucking go. This marking, Nick, you remember matches one of the markings from your book. Ah. This is one of the keys. Oh my god. Do you have them on you? Yeah, you got them on you, right? I've got them on me. Uh, check your character sheet. Um, Do you have them as weight? Fuck, where are, where are they? <laughs> uh, I don't think I ever added them down, Neil, on my character sheet. But I think I have them on me. The keys? And the book, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, do so mark them I'm, on your character uh, sheet. Yeah, yeah. How much does that weigh? The book weighs a pound. It's a small... Keys? What about the, the keys, though? Um, you have three pounds of... No, two pounds of keys on you. Okay, okay I'm calling it Copperhead Key Stash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's the, the, the <clears throat> Mickey's Journal. Right. So you filter through the keys that you have, and none of the keys that you have match this marking, but this marking matches a marking in the book. Interesting. So there's more keys in the book than we have, we've got. Yes. The okay, book has understood. lots and lots of markings. The number of keys you have only cover a very small faction. Okay. I pick lock, yeah. Um, yeah. Wait. It's pretty apparent that this lock is also of um, excellent quality. Wow. Which is crazy because excellent it quality is, yeah. locks are crazy expensive. So to put an extra excellent quality lock out there and then 10 of them in here is... is all the same. I have a question. Is it easier to break this lock off than it would be to pick it the lock is a part of the door um in no this lock is not part of the door this is a, a separate like outside padlock like a um lock. in theory you might be able to break this with a crowbar you maybe a crowbar. i've got a crowbar you do have a crowbar roll me Nick, you do one of the other locks i'll handle this one okay and we'll see how it gets wait can you check if it traps first yeah, I'll go check the first lock for traps. Um, here you go. Okay. Okay. Nick, roll me a D100. No traps on that one? No traps. Do you want a bonus for my strength or something? Uh, no, we're doing a bend bars check. Between your crowbar and you to open this lock would be a bend bars equivalency. So you have a 10% chance to bend bars on this lock and pop it off. Nope. No go. That's tough. It's heavy. Yeah. Um, but does that break the lock at all? No. Cool. No. Then just go do the other fucking lock. Yeah, I mean, I try the rest of them, Neil. There's nine more, so give me nine more D100s. Assuming he check traps as well. Yeah. None of them are trapped. Got one. Yes. Oh, my God. All right. You pop you legend. Do you want a D10? Uh, See no? which one it is? No. no? Okay, cool. That's fine. Oh. Okay. I ha in my brain, I, I you know it is. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So I um, crunched the lock. Oh fuck! I did it. Oh my god! I picked the lots and back up. I run over. I stopped lock picking for a bit. A thousand GP down the drain. That's that the lock price. was a thousand <laughs> yeah, GP. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. 
excellent locks are worth a thousand GP. To buy, they're worth a thousand GP. Wait, so if we unlock one of these, we, we could it sell it. Us. Yes. I don't know who you're going to sell it to, but even if you sold it for a quarter price, that's 250 GP. The bare minimum. Yeah. We you don't have a keep key no for it. Shit. We don't yeah. need any loot down here. We just fucking steal all locks. Yeah, how useful is a lock without oh, a key? Oh, without a key, it's not, <laughs> not too useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So the door swings open. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, I'm so fucking strong. You shine the lantern in. It is a white. Roll initiative. Yeah. To an empty sarcophagus. Oh, you fucking ill. Completely empty. It's okay. Oh. Maybe they're in the other ones. I'm going to keep know, working on the fourth Breaking one. the locks, though, right? We can't come back down here after this now, can we? But Absolutely not, but yeah, you're just going to need to go. It's go time. Oh, I'm not going to get another one, surely. Come I on, guess, just get I another the one. Next, I guess the next one, Neil. Uh-huh. Yeah? No? No. That's three. So there's, there's six left. Uh-huh. Oh, Five left. On that one. Four left. Three! Yes. Got another one. <laughs> Also empty. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you. Okay, I think that's all. I think of them. you've got one, two, three, one four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, one more. Oh, okay, and then the last one is the one that Luth that um, Pigeon is working yeah. on. Yeah. Sure. Right. The one with the symbol. Yep. Well, Pigeon, it'll take you two to eight hours to pick it. I'm picking it, so here you go. All right. You roll? Um. Well, you didn't sleep last night. You've been awake for, you know, 30 hours by this point in time. If that you're going to sit down adrenaline. and do 2d8, I mean, adrenaline wears off, right? Adrenaline's a short-term boost. Um, this is the... We're only going to get one of these locks is what we're kind of coming to now. You can stand here and pick this lock, but I'm going to um, make you make a lock picking check uh, when you're picking it. And failure might have side effects, but it'll be it'll probably don't worry. It's probably it's just roll well, right? It's too good. He's I, too I good. rolled a thirty-four. You fucking killed it. Yeah, who would even care? So yeah, you can just do it in two to eight hours. Let me just see if someone's going to interrupt you in the next two to eight hours. Six hours. Six hours. No one interrupts you in the next six hours. Oh my God. Let's go. It's empty. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. Oh, no. Luther, I got it. <laughs> this one you is legend. not empty. Let's go. This one That's has treasure. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. <laughs> treasure. Um, yeah. Sitting in here is a... How would one describe this? What's the right way of explaining this container? Um, you've got a red and blue bag. Normally bags, if they're cloth, are just sort of, you know, beige or brown or whatever. No this way. has multiple, like, stripes of red and blue that alternate up it. Um, uh, it's a bag. It's about oh, with shit in it, Nick. size of this mug or so. So it's not huge, I mean, but not tiny. But it's also check like traps. oblong, right? It's it's like it's a little bit longer than that mug. Maybe it's as tall as this dice case is. This uh, branded save or die limited edition dice nice. case, which can no longer wow. be gotten. Oh, it's no amazing. longer be bought. Yeah. 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 Once <clears throat> one time offering, um, and it's maybe you know as wide as the mug. So it's kind of a it's an odd bag, I mean, and. It Check it for traps? Yeah, someone put time and effort into making it look really nice and then buried it in this tomb. It doesn't seem to be trapped. I pick it up. It's kind of heavy. There's stuff in it. There's something oblong in it. I open it. Um, your and eyes. Inside. If it's possible for them to go wider, do so. Inside of this is a statue of a goddess it's about you know the height of this one of these things it's pretty thin um it's made out of some sort of 
pewter probably which is a you know a base metal of i think lead and tin i can't remember exactly what pewter is made of but it, it's a, a common ish metal of the time easy to work with easy to forge into different shapes um and it, it's just a statue of a goddess but underneath this pewter statue you can find coins but more delightfully you can find gems what goddess is it yeah which goddess <clears throat> would both of you make me you don't neither of you are trained in religion so both of you make me uh like wisdom checks at half your wisdom score Come on, we're surely recognizing the gods can't be that odd if they were labeled, maybe, but everyone sort of... The gods don't have just one well, that's face. that's Ferrasi. Yeah, maybe yeah. it is. <laughs> Neither of you, even if... Blood equals money. It's a female goddess. That's that's mm. all you got, but... She doesn't have a weapon. She doesn't have a holy symbol on her. If you were going to make a goddess, you would probably write her holy symbol on her somewhere, right? But they're done Anyways. in that, like, goddess style with the flowing robes and the waving hair and everything. And it's pagan? Maybe. It's, clearly a goddess statue but they never bothered to mark which goddess it was Interesting. it's weird is there anything else in this tomb or it's my uh the bag no it's just the bag perfect okay uh, okay do you, do you want to do another i don't think we've got time and you're about to fall asleep yeah there's enough this makes our last heist look like a uh, chump change i think we should Take what we've got and make a make a make to leave. I'm gonna pick up the broken lock. Okay, but before you do that, oh. I would like you to roll for the number of gems here. Okay, are you okay. ready to roll me two d eight? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I think it you should be forty, 40 forty, four, forty four. Why don't it's each one it's of you random. roll a d eight? It's too much. It's too, it's too much variability, because <laughs> it wouldn't make sense for there to be one gem here with all two. Why don't Why don't you that's, each roll a d8? That's my petition. Go ahead, Let's Nick. each roll I, a d8. I hear it. I get oh. A oh. oh my oh, god! god. I'm rich. <laughs> Thirteen gems. Yeah, thank God you didn't roll that forty-four. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. I just said it was variable. I didn't say it was good or bad. I just said it was variable. It is variable, yes. Yeah. Oh, Luther, we're, we're going to be rich. We're going to be rich. Do any of you have like a gem cutting or uh, an appraisal proficiency? I uh, think, Nick, you were working on it, right? Nah. Uh, no. I no. can't remember what you were working on. No, I don't no. have that. I was getting reading writing, which I now have, so maybe I'll mm. get appraising after this. Oh, sweet. Yeah. All right. I pick up the <clears throat> broken lock. I put it in my bag. The unlocked lock, you mean, not the broken lock. Um, or do you mean the broken lock? No. Oh. <sighs> Sorry. Luther, what do you think? Do you think they come down here and check these bags often? Do you think they'll know one's missing? Should we relock this? We could relock this, but I think as soon as they know that this place has been found and tampered with, they'll be moving anything down here. Hmm. We only have one more chance of getting anything from here, then. That's right. I... But uh, no way I can pick those locks, and no way you can stay awake for another ten hours. We could uh, go for a sleep in the skeleton chamber. But... but yeah, let's... It's risky. It's... But if they lock it, if they came and then they locked it behind them, we'd be stuck here. Correct. Wait, could it be lockpicked from the inside? No. No. No, if you go into one of those skeletal things and they close it, you would be given a single die roll to see if you can force open the door, and if that fails, you would be stuck in there and die. It's not worth it. Let's let's get out of here. Although I will say, though, if we take turns sleeping, if somebody falls, you know, comes in and falls down the marbles, like, we wake up. But if it's like five fighters, uh, nothing we can do. Let, let's let's go out of here. Let's reset everything. We'll leave it unlocked uh, up one, and let's take a sleep in the building like we did before. Up yes, one. and keep an eye. Maybe the building keep opposite. We'll keep an eye on it. If no one comes, we can go back down. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. I so? take the broken lock. I take the the new lock that is not broken that I've picked. Put mm -hmm. it all in my bag. Okay. That, that was the new lock and the broken lock. Correct. And you put them in there's your bag. There's two broken locks, by the right. way. Right. Okay. Broke two of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I take those both. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So how many how many hours of lantern oil have we used then? Six. Six. Yeah. Maybe uh, six, six and, and a half. Bit. Yeah. I close the tombs best I can. You know, I mm -hmm. gently push them, and we go. I pick up all the marbles. I do mm -hmm. second checks. Mm-hmm. Um, we close the top. We can't lock it. I'm not going to sit here and lock pick it. So mm -hmm. then we go. We take it, take off the trap. Yep. We open the door. We reset the trap. And if I'm confident I can do this door quickly, then I'm going to do it. If I don't think I can, then I'm going to leave it unlocked. I, I've done this. I've lock picked this door like six times now. <laughs> Yeah, you have done it many times. If you had to do it for the first time, at this point, it would take you 10 minutes. Um, if you have to do it right now, you can do it in D6 rounds to pick I'm this lock. i do it then. Yeah, yeah. Not a problem. Do it in one minute. Boom. Done. All right, and then we go, like, the house across the street or maybe across the street and over one. And I think I'm going to let him sleep first. And I'm going to uh, keep watch. I go to bed. You rest. Well-deserved uh, rest. We're so rich, Nick. But the green... Yeah, what color are the gems? <sighs> um... Oh. They're the good color. Oh, fuck. Yeah. They're like a deep red. Fuck yeah. Yes. I mean, maybe, my, maybe they're rubies. Eyes, <gasps> if they're rubies, what would they be worth each in my Just estimation? Fucking... Like hundreds of gold each. Hundreds of gold. Maybe thousands. Who knows? I mean, rubies. Oh, rubies geez. are the thing you put in king's yeah. crowns. We are fucking There's rich. no way. The thing is, though, this is so much money that it's the heat this is going to draw is insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, you because, wait. like, we can't sell gems like that without it getting back to them. Okay, yeah, we you wait. You rest. You do your best to sleep, but the excitement is palpable. Your heart fucking racing. All the loot that you've pulled from this place. The danger that you're in. You know, someone's going to have to come after you after this. Probably, right? You've just stolen these gems. Why is that one marked? What does the mark mean? Any thoughts while you're sitting here and waiting, Luther? No idea what the mark means, um, but that is something I'm like, I think that would be very useful information to have right now is understanding what that mark means. Mm. Um, and I really want to find that out. My feeling is that this is hubris and we should just take our take what we've got and leave. And it's just asking for trouble because it's already more money than we could ever hope to achieve. Like, I know, it's so much. Like in theory, like Uther is now Luther is now thinking of a life outside of this city. I mean, in theory, if this is what he thinks it is, we could move anywhere. We could move to Solemn. We could move to Minotauria. Fuck it, go anywhere. Give me a perception check. Yeah. Again, it doesn't matter. None of these rolls mean anything. It's all lies, except this time when you pass your perception check, despite being somewhat adrift in thought. Um, you will notice a pair of red coats. We're getting the fuck coming out. down the street. <laughs> well, a little pigeon sleeps. You peer out from around the cracks in one of these ruined, bombed-out buildings, and there, there they are—a duo of red coats, kind of jauntily strolling down the middle of the area. One of them, their weapon been? out, fencing against an invisible foe. The other one, chuckling to themselves as they make their way to the building across the yeah, way. Yeah, so I, wait, I wake him up as soon as they make their way to the door. I'm going to wait for them like to close the door behind them, yeah. and then we leave. Yeah, they sit, they fiddle with the lock. It appears they have a key. Um, someone grabs the, the weapon up top. Pretty easy for them to step inside. They're gone. We run. The yeah, because they're going to find out. They're going to find out the doors yeah, unlocked pretty soon. We so we got to go. Excellent. Nick, we might be able to use this place now as our own base, though. 
they're gonna but, abandon this shit. Probably, yeah. Potentially, maybe a little bit down the line. It, yeah. Like it might be a bit too obvious, perhaps. It's gonna return to the scene of the crime and all that, you know. It's like they, a common trope. I wonder. Do you think that they would think that they stole from each other? Yeah, I think that their initial thought will be that it's the copperheads, right? So the copperheads were it, trying to get hold of this location. It could be like one of the other redcoats stole from us. It will never come back to us, I don't think. I don't think so either. No, but <clears throat> but if we start asking around town trying to sell this stuff, yeah, we. We, we're running through the streets. We, we we might have to leave town and sell these. I just... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We could we could travel to High Castle and sell them there. Oh my god! But what would we even sell them for? Gold? How would we come back? We can't just bring a mountain of gold with us. That's true. I feel like we that's just true. got the the keys to the kingdom, but everyone's looking for us. Well, let's just get back to our house first. Yeah. We gotta take stock here. You hurry home. You return to your piece of shit house with wet, damp straw beds just laying on the ground. Some piece of crap table you found out in the streets for your, your table in the middle of the room. Maybe a broken barrel for a chair. One of you has just a stump for a chair. You lay out your gemstones. They glitter in the light that comes through your cracked windows. Now that we've got some proper light on them, what color are they? Are they like a deep red? They're a deep red. Oh, oh baby. fuck. <laughs> so, um, okay. What are these, Luther? I've never seen gems before. <laughs> I don't know. They look like the ones the kings have on their crowns. How I, big it, we have 13? <laughs> it can't be. It can't be. <laughs> this is actually almost like too good in a way. Like it's too much money. We can't fence it. Yeah, it's like if you rob a casino, like I, I don't know. It's like what the drug dealers have the problem with, like yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you launder? Them? How do you how do you launder this? And yeah. it's especially tough for us now. Like we'll be fine for the rest of our lives in buying groceries. Well, not really, because how do you convert I guess one can't ruby even convert into this gold? Ruby over, yeah. Because it's not like you can go to the shop and pay in a ruby. Um, I think we need to. Still meet the architect. Still find out what's going on in that book. That I think that will maybe help us. We, we Other need than to go, that, Luther, we need to go buy a um like a lockbox, something that we can hide this in, and I can use. I'll point to the good lock, right? I can I can lock it with that. But we we need to hide our hide our stuff. Let's um yeah. You know, th I think maybe we should just lay low for a day or two and see if this reverberates around town. Yeah. All right. So I think maybe what we should be doing is, well, we're waiting for the guy. I think we should maybe spend the evenings in the tavern and I'll try and eavesdrop and, you, and read yeah. lips. Yeah. And try yeah. and work out if word is around about this. Like, in a red uh, coat. The, the copperheads have stolen from the red coats. Yeah. Yeah. But then we do need to go back and meet Thomas at the end Luther, of the third day. We need, we need new identities if we're gonna have all this money. We need a reason. We haven't even got any money yet. We've just got some shiny stones. We need to think of a plan here. We could sell these to a fence, I assume. But anyone in this city is gonna just probably sell us out to the redcoats. I think, like, legitimately, something we could do is we could in the future like a week or two you know a month we need to we would probably need to leave the city i don't i don't we even go know go where that's the thing is we would need to come back as like noble people we would need to like have a completely new that's identity that's not a bad but, idea wait but i've got disguise i've got forgery yeah. i could with with the right assistance i could probably forge the kind of documents that would describe you as nobility but you're and not going to be able to pass yourself city. off as a noble forever. Like, I know you've got an acting proficiency, but you're no Meryl Streep. You're not going to be able to keep up all the noble tropes and trappings and accents. Have you seen A Knight's Tale, Neil? I ask you. Because he just found a piece of paper and, you know, that worked for him, so. That's no, true. No. Yeah, I agree. But he did have, who was it? Charles Dickens forge his paperwork uh, for not him? Charles Dickens. It's a... Uh... 
Uh, who is it? It's not Charles Dickens. It's a... Chaucer. The, the Canterbury Tales Chaucer, yeah. Yeah. Great movie. Um, what if we were, like, from a different part of the world, though? Like, from Dracus or something? Like, foreign... Em like, yeah, I well, think... Well, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that, like, then our difference in culture and customs might not be so easily Seen. outed. True. And then what? You're just going to pretend to be a Dracusian noble your whole life? We wouldn't give it up, I don't think, but I think we would move to the inner city. Well, the, the, the issue we've got here is that- Oh, you're not going to be able to, like, you you know, to get to the inner city, these might be gem. This, this might be gemstones, but this is probably not buy a house in the inner city money. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, really? Well, okay. I mean, maybe, maybe not. It depends on what their value is, how much you could get out of them. But at the same time, like, if you're buying a house in the inner city, you will have expenses and you will blow through money quickly, right? You're going to have to have dozens of servants. There's going to be taxes involved. It's going to be, it'll These be a big thing. Across our mind. Yeah. And then trying to pass yourself off as foreign nobles, like you might be able to pass yourself off as a foreign noble, but only if you're kind of reclusive and hide in your inner city house. But then what, what's your life is just trying not to be outed as a noble. What, I think, what are you gonna do with your do life, is, even? Why don't yeah. we just? Why don't we just right? If we can even just sell one of these at like twenty percent value, that's give us enough money to get a middle class house back in the city, to dress nicely, to live a more reasonable lifestyle. We can maybe work our way up to a position where having such wealth wouldn't seem so unusual as it would right now. But I, I hear what you're saying. But working our way up to having this amount of wealth is is insane. Like, what we're going to basically do is maybe sell one of these, fund our lifestyle for a few years, and we're just going to have 12 of them in the, in, the, in the closet. Well, yeah, but no, if we start a business, you know, like if we're in the business of money laundering, you know, if we could start a business that could theoretically generate such wealth, then all of a sudden it's no longer as suspicious. But uh, this sound like th this amount of money is almost campaign ending in the way that it's so much money. Like we kind of fulfilled our goal of Matthew, not being shitters. I have an idea. He said, "Well, he has zero gold." Yeah, yeah, but that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, I have an th idea. there's got to be more to this. This amount of money, it can smooth over a problem with the copper hands. Maybe, I was thinking that too. We'd have to be certain we hit it somewhere they'll never find, because otherwise they'll just kill it and take it, kill us and take it. Actually, I don't want to do that anymore. Now I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we we'll think about this and wait for the cipher. I think how, that's our next step. We yeah, it's that's the next step. In theory, I think the best way to sell one of these would be to travel to High Castle and sell it there, outside of sell it to a fence in High Castle, we outside of the Red Coat's influence. Sell it here. You There's wouldn't. Yeah, we cannot sell it. Know anybody in High Castle? You wouldn't even know where to sell this. Like here in the town, you know what's going on. You have an idea of what the town looks like, where things are. If you went to High Castle, you'd be like babes in a new town. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just want to stress that that's a completely different area. Agreed. And yeah. the view that they take of people from Stromheim, and you have Stromheimian accents. You will be entering into a brand new territory. Well, totally then we can need do it. To, Just some trouble. We need to forge a strong relationships here with people we can genuinely trust not to sell us out. Actually, maybe that's what we can do. Maybe we lay low on these gems for a long, for a while, right? Yeah. We forge incredible bonds with, you know, certain people. Hmm. And then we can like hit them with, hey, we have one of these. Yeah and sell yeah because they're missing 13 right now and you know what actually if 13 go missing and it becomes like legendary in the city that this amazing heist if we wait a year and one turns up no one's going to assume that we're the people who stole the 13 they're going to feel like you stole the one from someone who stole one of the 13 or they've made their way throughout the city and yes i've got one of them now but i didn't steal the original 13. <clears throat> so we're in a situation where we have unlimited wealth yeah, but, but we can't. Right now, <laughs> we still need to make gold to be able to sustain and build up our. Okay. Nice. I like that. I like it. Yeah, it's yeah good. I like it's it. Good. We have unlimited wealth, but we have no way of getting rid of it. Yeah. So we, we can't even ask someone to help us appraise it. I think we just wait until I can get an appraisal skill. Yeah, agreed. To appraise this properly. <laughs> we could go, funny. like, we could go seal, like, a book and 
read the book that tells us like you know here's what gems are typically worth and maybe it have like images and pictures um we could go into a jeweler's when we've got a bit more gold and yep. we could ask oh how much is this and they'd be like well this is very expensive because this is uh whatever stone what well, what we need to do right now is we need to get a box to put these in or maybe not even that i think we just need to bury them in the in the cellar of this building yeah let's no nah, let, let's it. get a lockbox as well i think we get a lockbox we lock it with that lock and we bury it somewhere mm -hmm. we keep that safe and then i think we like we said we, we drink around some of the taverns over the next few days and try and gauge if word has got out about what's happened and then eventually we'll meet thomas and hopefully he's fixed solved the cipher but we'll Look, see we we can never ever tell anyone about these agreed at least not in a in whole well there might be a day where we can tell someone about one <clears throat> yeah so i say that we buried 12 here we're in the basement i'll show you like mm -hmm. i'll put my foot in an area and we bury one of these over here so that when we need to go and get this one and sell it eventually we don't have to disturb the whole pie okay yeah, I'm going to have to make this house a bit more homely, though. Agreed. Because I'm not... If, if we're burying these here, we're staying here for the long term, and this isn't exactly what I had in mind, so... All right. Okay. So it sounds like you still need a little bit of money. Yeah, I think we're all right for we living expenses, have a good, though. Yeah, we have a good amount of money right now. Okay, but if you want to furnish gold. a house... You know, How much it'll... does it cost to furnish this house, you think? I mean, quality is going to be the big decider there, but if you wanted to, like, turn it into a proper livable house, it's going to cost you probably, like, 20 gold, 30 gold. You know, it's a... quite a lot. I mean, but we can we can build up to that. You know, we can do totally. five gold. Five gold uh, here, here five there. gold there. Yeah. Yeah. We get the... Right. So let's 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 spend five gold now. I'll, and over I'll, the next I'll couple of days, up. we'll get the essentials. Like, an actual bed, mm -hmm. a table, and a couple of chairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll Let's save some dishes for later. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to spend um, eight gold just to make it a nice round number for me. Perfect. So eight okay. gold out of the 20, 30, 20 to 30, 20, 30 yeah. is spent now. I'm taking it off okay. my hair. Excellent. Excellent. You've got a good house now. It's livable. It's workable. You've got these gems, probably worth a whole bunch. This random okay. goddess statue. Um, what oh, what statue, yeah. theory... What is this? Why are Glitch these gems no and the idea. statue in this nice red and blue bag down there? I kind of want to figure out the statue stuff. The answer will be in the cipher, well. surely. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, But I think I'm it's thinking. important right now that we just put out there that the gems are buried. <clears throat> like. Yep. You buried the gems. Deep. We fucking got. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Six feet deep? We're, we're getting a lockbox, right? We're putting the lock in, and we are burying these gems fucking far down, like as far as we can probably. That's you in. can do that, but that's a that's a pretty big depth to bury something down to six feet. You can absolutely one hundred percent buy a shovel and buy a lockbox and do shovel. this whole thing yeah. together. Um, this is not the first six foot hole we've dug in a basement. No, yeah, I I, I really think okay. six feet is the number. Okay. We're this is going to be twelve gems plus the bag. Do you want to bury the statue, Luther? Yeah. And we bury the statue. We're keeping one gem, and we're going to bury that, you know, a few feet down in a different spot. But okay. we're going to spend... Um, this is going to be after, like, the cypher thing. Or, I guess, in the two in the day, maybe it's two days. happening, yeah. Yeah. Burying this and then trying to make it look inconspicuous. Mm hmm are you going to note the locations you buried these things? Because Absolutely. if you if you come back six months later, you might not remember the exact spot. Once upon a time, we had this pet rabbit named Shadow. And the rabbit died from some rabbit disease that was going around. And one of our neighbors was like a high school science teacher. And he was like, oh, well, if you bury the rabbit in this, you know, in a place that has like this much sand and this much other stuff, like it'll decompose and you can come back in six months and you can just have like a rabbit skeleton. And we thought that was a great idea. So that's exactly what we did. 
and we came back six months later and we dug and for the life of us we couldn't find it and we must have dug like five holes in our backyard trying to dig up the rabbit that we had buried looking for a rabbit skeleton couldn't find it uh to I this day that. i have no idea where it is we are going to put it in a very particular spot and i think the difference between this is that we're burying a few million dollars here so I think we're going to probably remember the exact location. I think actually what we do, right, is... It's valuable, so, how do, how do we, so I'm going to remember exactly where I placed how it. Do we, uh, how do we get to the basements? Is it down some stairs? Yep. What's my birthday? Like, say my birthday is like the 4th of September, yeah? Perfect. I'm going to write on your yeah? character sheet. So I'm going to take four steps forward. So am I, am I starting against the left wall? Am I starting against the right wall? Where do the stairs come in? Uh, well, isn't the left or right wall based on where the stairs come in? Wouldn't the stairs be the, coming from the back wall? I'm trying to work out is when I take my four steps forward, is there a wall to my left or is there a wall to my right? Wall to your left. Okay, so I take four steps forward and then I take set, I turn 90 degrees to the right and I take seven steps to the right. And that's where I'm burying it. That's and I will right. remember this because it's my birthday. It's the 4th of September. You go down to this basement, four steps forward seven Excellent. steps to the right that's what right we're it's not seven steps forward and four steps to the right no it's four steps then Fourth. seven to the right good yes because and dates good... go the day then the month then the year all right because that's what makes sense because it's in normal order okay right I'll do this you would same... never say september 4th no i wouldn't i'd say the 4th of september you weren't born on september first. 4th no i wasn't i was born on the 4th of september okay i'll do the same for pigeon for the one ruby uh, i will take two steps forward and then 11 steps to the right. Oh, it's fucking like right next to his, right? That's just- yeah, that's too close. That's too close? Then yeah, I'll take 11 steps forward. Be born on a different day. No, 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 I'll take 11 <laughs> steps forward and two steps to the right. I'm doing so month and then day. You're American, okay, I'm yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes you sense. You'll remember it that way, I'll remember it this way. Four steps forward. I'm writing on my character sheets, but I don't, I've already... I don't write, I don't write it anywhere. If you can't you write, write it, any, it if you write it on your character sheet, you're writing it somewhere in the in game. I'm not okay, writing I'm, it down. I'm, I'm not writing it down. I'm there. But, I, but I'm but I'm writing my birthday down though. I already did. What? Perfect. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, second second of November. No. Second of February. Second of February? I thought you said it was two and eleven. No, the eleventh of February, right? Um, it's the eleventh oh, of February. Okay. The eleventh of February. Yeah. So it's eleven steps forward. Wait, no, no, no. Because now you're right. doing That's it the English way. Right. Well, I'm okay, doing so you're doing it the English way. Right. Okay. Doing things right. Okay, 11 right. forward 11 and 2 to the right. Forward, two to yeah, the right. so we're doing it the Great. proper way. And, it, and you know, you, your footsteps are always the same distance. Yeah. yeah always. You do like the toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You're doing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Okay. We're doing toe-to-toe -to -toe now. We're okay. not messing around here. Okay? And it's, it's our feet. It's my feet. It's, it's his, your it feet. Depends. Yes. If I tried to do his feet, it's not going to work the same. It's not right. Work. All right. So if, if he's dead and I try to go look for it, I might it's have be a hard. rabbit problem. Okay. And the sure. the 12 gemstones and the statue are buried in a lockbox that is locked with the key that you have. Yeah. That is no, locked we don't. with the lock that I picked that I do not have a key for. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. But it is with the exquisite lock. Excellent, right? Yeah, excellent. excellent, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just you're going to buy a, a chest, a, a small metal box. No, 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 a lead box. I feel like the lead is pushing gold. it a bit. Um, you can get a custom lead box made for you, but it will take time. Would we know to get a lead box? I don't think we would. I think we just buy a box. Let's be honest with ourselves. I just don't, don't know that lead blocks I don't think crying. we would, no. Nah. Um, and we're, we don't need a big one, right? We just need a tiny metal box. Good thing about burying it six feet deep, though, yeah. is dirt does block some scrying in yes. big enough distances. So. Yeah. Uh, a tiny metal box, yeah. Is 10 gold for a tiny bag. metal box, and then you'll probably want... I pay for it out the yours. hoard. I'll pay it out the hoard. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then show an extra silver for, like, some cloth to wrap the lock mm -hmm. in so dirt doesn't get inside the lock and ruin it. You want the lock to be protected. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you can... Silver. You can rub some oil in the cloth so that moisture doesn't get into the lock because you know enough about locks that you know you don't want moisture there. So you've got like a, an oily cloth that you've wrapped the lock in. Perfect. And the the Thank one you. remaining gem is just placed by on its own in the dirt six feet down. Yeah. Cool. 
think so. Not even yeah. six feet, like Not four feet, feet, I think. I, I think Great. four feet's fine, yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right, party. We've got wealth. We've got style. We have a barely furnished household. Can Fantastic. we get the um, I'm going to kill another... I'm going to say it takes two more days to, to sort out all of these things. Do we, you rest yeah. and you sleep and then you dig and then you buy a box and blah, blah, blah. And it takes you two days to get through it all. And do tonight... We hear, do we hear any talk in the streets about what we've done? Um, none of these two days because these two days are spent working on this stuff. Okay. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe someone's talking about it, but it hasn't hit like Us. hot gossip that everyone's talking about. Yeah. Okay, I go right. to meet Thomas. Well, we both go. Yep. You go to meet Thomas. And we're going to take yeah, our nice. last break right here. Perfect. Yeah, sure. Um, and we'll be back in a few minutes with some more Hardly Heroes. Welcome back to Hardly Heroes, everyone. We're going to make right. our way this day back to the Red Lion, back to everyone's favorite multi named tavern. Yes. And meet up with. Who was it? Thomas. 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 The architect. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we get there about an hour before sunset, which is when he said to meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. He and he's already there. there. He's there and waiting for you. I yep. uh, I give him a wave. We're obviously in our good clothes now. No mm -hmm. weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, well, how does his face look when I'm walking up to him? I make a charisma check to try and read his Oh. Demeanor. Okay, I got 20. It's not a fail. It's a fail. It is a fail. Yeah. It is. 21's a sad pass. Sadly. Okay. Um, well, anyway. Yeah. I you know, you can't wife. really get a read on him. He waves at you. Gets your attention. He's here. I, Maybe uh, lip reading in here. I'll mm -hmm. sit somewhere else. I go to uh, shake his hand. Thomas. He gets up you. and shakes yours. Greetings. How have the uh, last few days treated you? Well, I didn't find any new clients. Alas. But I did make some progress. Nice. On this. Um, Fantastic. The numbers I haven't been able to solve, and the capital letters are different, or what I assume are capital letters are different. So I, I, uh, I've made some guesses. That must have been where I was going wrong. Mm. I just assumed all the letters were shifted the same. Mm. No, no, no. They're totally different symbols for capitals, I think. Interesting. Interesting. Well, do you have your notes? I do. I notice him being pensive and I sort of lean back in my chair a little bit. Oh? You said this was a game between you and your friend? Yeah, that's right. It's a long running thing. We used to live together when we were younger. We used to challenge each other with puzzles and such. Well, there might be a second puzzle in here because I don't understand what any of this means. I don't know if it's supposed to have a meaning or not. Uh, I would expect it to have some meaning. I would have thought it was prose of some sort. Do you know who the Tin Man is? My shrug. The Tin Man? No. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, my friend did say that this, uh, this document had some history in Stromheim, so perhaps that's a figure from the town's history. He shakes his head. Well. Okay. Um, he will hand over to you a... I just need to make some adjustments to obfuscate a couple of things. Um, he will hand you some notes. He will say, I think some of these capitals are pretty obvious to guess. Um, not all of them, though. Why, thank you, I, I'd say, looking at it. I mean, do I feel like he's done a good percentage of the work here? Yeah, he seems to have translated pretty much everything. Well, uh, Thomas, thank you so much for your work. I'm happy to buy you another drink and happy to uh, fulfill the rest of our agreed price here. Um, I don't suppose you'll run into my friend, but if you do hear anyone uh, talking about me, if you could keep your involvement in this, uh, your aid here to yourself, my uh, my pride would appreciate it. I say as I slide him over uh, five gold coins. 
looks at the gold coins, which are two more than he was promised. And I'll look back at so, you. Yeah. You did a good job, better than I expected. There's barely anything left for me to do. He will My hand you will the beside himself. I'm sure to win. He'll hand you the papers and nod. Um, well, I guess with that, uh... I guess you need a drink. I shout over to the bartender and motion for him to bring some. No, drinks. that's okay. I'm making an early night of it. It was a pleasure ah, to meet well, you. Of course, yeah. Sleep <laughs> well. Guys. I hope I see you again in the future. Pleasure's all mine. Okay, can I make a charisma check now to gauge his feeling? Like, does he seem worried? You gotta does kill this scared? guy. <laughs> I I get that he seems suspicious, but does he seem like? Yeah, give me a charisma check. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to gauge whether this is okay. kind of a. There's something going on here. I don't want any parts of it. I'm just leaving guy. it alone. Have or... you ever met someone who's told you a story about their life? And as you've listened to the story, you've been like, oh shit, who the fuck is this person that I'm talking to right now? Mm. And then been like a little bit skeeved out about it and kind of just wanted to maybe put a little distance between you and them. Yeah, that's the impression I'm getting. Yeah, that's good. I think that's ideal, really. Like he's like, I don't want to get involved. And I think that's just what we need. So I will- Something doesn't my... smell right. You know, something's rotten in Denmark and I'm just gonna- Leave it alone. Mm -hmm. um, so he leaves. Uh, the bartender brings me the two drinks, and I'll pick them up and walk back over to the table with Pigeon and put the I'm drink down. Reading lips. Okay. Twenty-one. Yeah, that's a great roll. What you get? No. You would move on from that person very quickly. Um, you, you get an old person rambling. You know, it looks like an interesting conversation from the outside, but when you start piecing lips together, it's basically like adult grandpa rambling on and on about incoherentness. Next. That's pretty boring. Yeah, next person. No, nope. okay. third person. Okay. God. These okay. rolls over here. I'm rolling dice to see how good of your conversations are, and, and they're shit. Uh, this is like, you know, my cow. She's got the pus coming out of her side, and I keep squeezing I it out, and it keeps oozing. One. Is there one more, or is that it? I think by this point, um, <laughs> you're, the dude's showing up. Perfect. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I sit back down. I put two drinks on the table, and I say, well, he's a little bit suspicious, but I think he knows to leave things well enough alone he's done a good job with the cipher there's still a little bit more work to do but i reckon when we get home i could get through a lot of the journal do you want to go to a redcoats tavern one do some listening yeah i want to see what's what up. if those guys are in there <clears throat> which guys fucking the guys who came to our house i'll do a check first and then if they are we'll leave Uh, okay. Okay. We'll pay for our drinks. We'll head across town. We'll go to one more tavern. Yeah, Redcoats Tavern. Um, I will... Or a nice tavern in the area. It doesn't have to be, like, their tavern. Right. I say to him, um, like, I'll wait over here. If everything's good, like, just give me a thumbs up in the window. Okay. I will go inside, and I'll do a perception check to see if I can notice, like... Are there redcoats in here? Yeah. If there are, is it those two domers? 35. There was a lot. There was more than two, wasn't there? There was three, I think. It was three, yeah. Um, so this is a redcoat tavern that you're heading to, um, or a, a tavern in the redcoat greater this area. One. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. And what was the... You're making a perception there, check to see if there's actual, like, full-fledged redcoats living We'll and also know to specifically look for the three people that might recognize us. I think that'll be a charisma check, no? Um, Maybe. pretty easy to tell. There's no one fancy in this place. This is middle class people. No bandits around. I'll ask Luther. Do you want to go to this one or do you want to go to a fancier one? I think we should uh, go back and work on the cipher. All right, you go back and I'll sit here and I just want to read a few lips. 
Don't do anything yeah. stupid, Pigeon. Oh, well. I'll go inside. I'll pay five All right. silver for a drink I or whatever. I think that Luther in the past might have been he's nervous of leaving Pigeon on his own here, but he's really proven himself these last few days. So I think he's uh, not begrudgingly, but uh, maybe at first reluctantly, but decides to leave him to it and heads back home. Pigeon, you've got uh, no weapons on you, but you are wearing, you know, long coat and and whatnot, right? I have, um, I would have daggers on my hidden strap. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm wearing like a long coat. I'm wearing a sh like a kind of loose -ish shirt. I'm wearing my boots and uh, I'm not wearing my leather armor. Okay. Well, you read lips in here. Give me three lip reading checks. Here we go. Got two. It was the third one. I had to roll the 19 on the quality of the information. Oh, damn. And the first two were six and four. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, if the check is successful, 70% of the conversation is understood. So I rolled a 20. Yeah, I don't it's get a failure. Seventy you know. percent. It's just a failure. It's just a failure. Yeah. Okay. I leave. I go back. All right. Bummer. I rolled something okay. good finally. Next time, All I right. swear. Next time next you'll get time. it. Um. Yeah. So we end up back at the house. Okay. So here's I am the on first our new page. kitchen table. Yeah. Um. Oh, I should. I'll probably add. So the first page um, has some scrawlings on it. And how should we say this? Let me rephrase. These notebooks that you've got, this notebook yeah. that you have, has some things in the common tongue, has some things in a cipher. And it's not wall-to-wall -wall text, right? There are doodles. There are drawings. Um, some sections have lots of text. Some sections have less text. The... Yeah. You've handed him two disparate pages from different areas of the book that should be relatively unconnected. Um, and the first page looks something like this. I'm just going to put it in the Hardcore Heroes cast area. Uh, the X's are numbers, presumably, and the ones are capital letters, presumably. So this right. appears to be just a list of names with some number next to them but yeah. you don't know what the capitals are on the on these okay cool the that's all that's on the page there's no words around this um no no okay uh the second page has this there's a there are two more people described, but it's going to be in the same format. Again, okay. a one represents a capital, and an X represents, assuming, presumably, a number. Do you want to, um, do you want to like, capture that and put it on screen for the chat? Yeah. The Tin Man lives on XXX something Orsett Street. X hired men. Something E. So capital letter E. He. Capital H is early to bed and early to rise and lives in a house with his ex-siblings, wife, and ex-kids. The wine cellar is valuable and his locks are good. The brass man lives on a different number on Pogrom Lane, maybe? Ex-hired man, keeps normal hours, lives with his ex-women and ex-guards who take watches in groups of ex. Um... No known wealth, but it's certainly somewhere locks are good, but upper balcony is closed with a latch. Interesting. Okay. Cool. So it's like targets. <clears throat> I put it for everyone to read. I'll try and make it larger. Okay, so go. actually the even without the context, this is somewhat suspicious. Yes. Like for the guy reading it, it's suspicious. Yeah. It's highly suspicious for the guy reading it. He knew what was going on. Yeah. But my story could still, it does hold a semblance of truth to it. You know, I mean, like, uh, there's reasonable doubt in his mind that I could be telling the truth. Like, if what he I said, wants to look the other way, you've given yeah. him a story that he can look the other way with. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. 
So I think, Neil, that's great. I'm assuming that based on his notes, I could take some time. I could solve the cipher for the whole journal. Probably. The numbers, numbers might be tough. Yeah. Right? Because numbers can come in any order. There's no yeah. like, oh, here's two in a row. This is probably a, an O yeah. or a whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or it'll Do, be you know what? When I'm when I'm seeing the X's in the numbers, is mm -hmm. that a, is it just a, a number every time? But it's like a or is that a symbol? Is that a different symbol every time, or it's always an X? No, you can. Sorry, I I am writing X's where the numbers yeah, yeah, are, but yeah. there are ten different symbols that could be could but represent not one like, of those X's. They're but symbols, they're not, not yeah. numbers. It's not like there's some sort of like. Correct. Like shift in the numbers going on. And correct. It's like correct. it says it says it's a seven, but it could be a two right. based on some right. calculation. It's, it's, it's like a different symbol. Completely different characters. Okay. So maybe if we found out where the Tin Man lives, and then we yes. know where his house is, it would be able to crack probably the rest. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So if we could um, find, but we need to know who the, the Tin Man was. Cipher, though. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to busy myself with. I've just finished like getting my reading writing proficiency. So I've probably been reading in my spare time and jotting think... down some notes. And I'm now going to spend the time that I was previously studying on my reading and writing. I'm now going to spend trying to work through this journal and decode it. Let's okay. do XP and our characters will take like two weeks off for you to do this. You know, we'll yeah. lay low for a few weeks, probably yeah. get the next month of expense. You can do some more lip reading. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's awesome. And now Neil's gonna write out a whole journal. Yeah. Oh no, there was a house fire. It's gone. <laughs> okay, well let's do some experience here and then we'll do some downtime and uh, oh, we'll move on with our campaign. So we killed a couple skellies. Um, Ring in fact. Yeah. And that was the only combat that we've done, but mm -hmm. we did finish off this major story element well, of... Uh, we we also avoided an encounter with those two men by hiding. Yep. And I picked two locks. I think but that should be some thief skill later. experience. But yeah. yeah. Um, so just for surviving another session and for <laughs> picking all uh, and for the, the combat that you've done, the party is going to get, Nick, uh, get 125 each gold what did you say sorry mate i think we should get gold to xp for the treasure that we stole as well oh neil's gonna say not until you actually convert it into usable wealth i don't know i think that's yeah. gonna be the case because let's say these things are worth a hundred thousand um gold you'd yeah. get two hundred thousand experience which of course you could only get to so high in a level sure. but I would then be telling you exactly what they're worth. Whereas if I say, okay. actually, you've completely misjudged and these are only 10 GP each, then now you'll, like, if I give you XP for it, you'll know their value. And yeah, it's currently... Yeah, but it also means that, like, if... One, yeah, well, when we sell the first one... XP for the should... rest of them, then? No, I think we should just get XP for the one that we've... I think it makes sense. It's like a continuous flow of XP, and we're also going to waste all, it I by... I agree with you, Nick, yeah. We're not going to waste it by getting all at once and getting level capped. I mean, if we give it to you right now, it will be the least possible amount of XP. And if you slowly yeah, exactly. take it over time, it That's will be the, the most. most amount. I'm there cool with go. that. Yeah, I just want to yeah. make okay. sure that we're all, all right. happy yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, uh, so, so 125, 125 each for surviving, for surviving yeah. and combat. Uh, let me open up my handy dandy experience calculator. It says do not award experience points. They are for chumps. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that you'd make an experience calculator no matter what you put in, it just says don't bother giving them XP time to wait to <laughs> Say that the quest's not finished. Say that they need a week's downtime. It just gives you a list of different excuses that you could oh use. Oh my god, that's so good. The DM excuses <laughs> handbook. Yeah. Oh fuck, I need to write that. Different chapters like XP, loot. <laughs> <laughs> Lore Wait, explanations. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what was yeah. the story of his tomb? Eh, doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a mirror throne. Um, yeah, that was true. a good one. Mirror throne was sweet. That was cool. 
Where were we? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Was there anything on this previous page? No. Excellent. So, um, who had the idea of living, hiding inside the tombs with the skeletons? Me. That was me, so that was a good Does idea. Moon take 100 experience for that idea? I loved it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I wish it would have came to be. Yeah, right. I know, that was, was so good. I fucked if it did, so. That was a sweet idea, though. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Nick, your handling of finding the architect slash engineer was pretty good. I'll give you 50 for that. Thank you. Um, each of you should take 200 for role-playing your character well. Uh, I'm trusting you to mark these down. I'm not remembering or writing yeah. anything. yeah. Uh, la 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 la. Rogues, special abilities. You picked two locks, Lucas. That's 400 yeah. experience for you. And I hid once. The whole part, you, yeah, you did run and hide. Um, I'm not going to give any experience for the hide. That was just okay. sort of a, you know, a void situation. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about can it. I, can I get some experience for my acting? Um, you did pass yourself off as a slightly higher noble, as a slightly higher yeah. position in society. Um, yeah, go ahead, it's take two hundred for that. It is thief skills, yes, yes, it yeah. is. Two hundred for that. Cool. Um, I think that's it. Wait, the quest? No? The quest? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, for for the individual class awards quest obviously you finally figured out what the red coats were hiding over there the quest that started our whole campaign that got you kicked out of your home that made you enemies of the copperheads that you murdered a man for yeah. um that you almost got yourself killed for that you got your clothes soiled for getting fixed up in all of this and finally figuring it out and looting the tomb the, the funny thing is we killed Mickey because of this quest, but actually it had no bearing on it. No, Mickey just gave us a whole nother fucking quest line to go on. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The The Mickey storyline really did go nowhere um, so far. The remainder of your quest is worth... He's going to drop a bomb here, Nick. Watch. Big bomb. He's a thousand say, each. Boom. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's what I like. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, your next on. level up is Thousand. six grand. So I don't think anyone's there yet. Nah. Um, so let me calculate my XP because I get 10%. 10%. Oh, nice. Um, Times. I am on 4,606. I'm on. Hold on. I'm close, Neil. Five, four, oh, yeah. five, one. Not mm. bad. Not I got bad. two thousand and seven and a half experience, um, because <laughs> of my ten percent. Yeah. And that also gave me another XP, so it's huge. Okay, well done, party. Um, All right. Good this job. completes. Sorry, this completes chapter one of Hardly Heroes, the first quest done. When we come In back next session. We will be doing chapter two of Hardly Heroes. Actual thieves who actually know what they're doing and have shit going on in their lives. Yeah, not Sweet. just like bums living in a hovel. Yeah. If anything, that was the, the prequel. Was chapter zero, yeah. Yeah, the prelude to the campaign, and the campaign mm. starts now. Cool. That's always, okay. how it always happens. All right. Make and... sure for next session that you have, because um, Pigeon's going to be going to bars. And like lip reading and trying to get like the lowdown of like what's happening. Oh, I got so um, many lowdowns for you, buddy. Story. Good. Oh, I've got All stories right. up the wazoo. Good. Um, yeah. I want to hear about old man Frank and the donkey that he found. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about scheduling now or do that when it's past the recording? Uh, well, let's just end the recording and we'll see you guys later. Yeah. Bye. All right. See you guys.